You've come to hear me tell a story, have you? If you please, we would love to hear one of your stories. You have seen so much. You have lived so long. Oh, <laughs> so good of you to remind me of my age, child. No, don't worry. I am an old woman, but I've lived a long and fulfilling life, and I do have stories to tell. Which story would you like to hear? A true one. A true story. All my stories are true, child. There are enough fairy tales in the worlds already. There's no need for me to make up more, believe me. Tell us the story of the balance, then. <laughs> you want the story of the balance? Oh, that's a long story, child. And not one I'd venture to tell at this hour. But perhaps I could tell you a story that I heard a long time ago. A story that became a crucial turning point in the history of the balance. And that set in motion wheels that to this day are still turning. Please, yes, that does sound like a story we'd like to hear. Very well. This story, like all good stories, begins where it ends. In a tower. In a realm that is no more. Tell me I'm dreaming again. You know, for once, just once, it would be nice to have a decent night's sleep without waking up screaming from a bad dream at 4 a.m.
Oh, perfect. I guess if I don't do something to save that egg, I'll suffer seven years of bad karma or something. such pleasure in torturing us. Torturing you? Who are you? We are the voice of all trees, the spirit of wood and leaf. You're a talking tree? No, a tree does not talk. At least not in your tongue. The tongue of trees is the language of wood, root, and leaf. Who are you then? Like we said, we are the voice of all trees. Whenever an injustice is done, we must speak for the tree, if we are present. It's the branch. I shouldn't have broken the branch off. Oh, what does it matter, anyway? There is nothing more to be done for us. We are simply here to provide comfort in the final passing to Earth. We? I only see one of you. We are one with our host, as we are all one spirit, but legion. Yeah, uh, thanks for clearing that up. We do not expect you to understand. You are human. What happened to the tree? Oh, the pain. As the battle raged, we... Battle? Between the Mother and Black Chaos. She was only protecting her child, but it would not back down. And the force of their battle shook the mountain. The brook that fed us was led astray, and without water, we began to wither and die. What's the deal with the egg? Egg? What egg? Oh, of course, the child. Whenever the mother was absent, we were entrusted with the safety of the child. But now, withered and without strength, we can do nothing to help. We have failed the mother, and we despair. Our shame knows no bounds. Who are you again? We are the Wood Spirit. We come to all trees in the hour of great need to provide comfort and aid in the passing to Earth, and to give a voice to those who suffer. Our time is running out as we speak. The passing to Earth is about to begin. Leave us now. What about the egg? Oh, it is too late. Without sustenance, we do not have the strength to bring it safely home. We have failed. And the Earth will know our shame for all time to come. Isn't there anything I can do to help? Oh, we do not expect a human to come to our aid. Lose the attitude, okay? Just tell me if there's anything I can do. It is futile. We need water, but there is none. Not after the brook changed course. I'll find a way. Don't panic. We do not panic. Unlike you, we accept our destiny. If, however, against all odds, you do succeed, we will carry the child safely back into its nest. Do not make a foolish attempt on your own. It would spell certain misery. This is interesting. I've never seen a scale this size before. I'll keep it as a souvenir. I think I just made a funnel. Cool! I'm so proud of myself.
This should do the trick. Hello? Hello? Leave us be. Are you okay? We find our strength returned, and so we have no time for idle conversation. We must drink and rejoice. Aren't we forgetting something? Hush, listen. The song of ancient wood. Is it not sweet? Sweet, definitely. Yeah, the baby's probably ready to boogie down as well. The baby, oh, the egg. Thank the earth. We almost forgot. Uh oh. What was that? Uh-oh. It is you. You have come. You know me? April. Daughter. I have been waiting for you. Waiting? Why? Because it begins here, with you. As it always has. What do you mean? The breach and the mending. The pain and the joy. The end of the old and the dawn of the new. A different world. I am the mother of what is. But you, you are the mother of a future that may yet be. How will I know? How will I know what to do? I will guide you. And I will protect you as much as I can. But in the end, you are on your own. I'm afraid. You always were, my child, my daughter. This is probably not a good thing. must have been tossing and turning all night. It's so hot in here, too. No wonder I keep having these weird dreams. I've basically been simmering in my own sweat every night this past week. Doesn't look like it's gonna cool down anytime soon, either. It's another sunny day in Newport. It's a good thing the studio's got proper air conditioning. I promised myself I was going to spend most of the day working, and I don't intend to break that promise. Not this time. It's a picture of me and my friends.
It's Constable Guybrush, my toy mon- Oh, ape. He doesn't much like being called monkey. I've been keeping a diary intermittently since I was five years old. Not the same one, of course. I started this one, I think, April of this year. Hey, it's my timesheet from the cafe. I completely forgot I put it in here. Good thing I found it, because I'm broke. I'd better head over to the studio to do some work. Only two weeks until the big show opens, and my contribution is in serious need of attention. Might be a good idea to get dressed first, though. Hey, babe. Babe, you're looking real sexy today. Zach, listen, I I've got to run, and... What's going on, April? How you been? Pretty good, and you? Fantastic. Listen, April, how about you and me getting together sometime soon? Like, uh, tonight. The pavilion is really cooking this week. We could pop some raptures, do a little clothes dancing. How about it? Let me think about it. So, think about it, babe. <laughs> but don't keep thinking too long or I'll be gone. There are other birds in the sea, you know? Gotta go. What an asshole. Organic plastic. It grows, and it converts carbon dioxide into oxygen, just like real plants, but it doesn't need nourishment of any kind. Convenient, but disturbing. I can't tell what that note's saying as long as it's up there. Fiona's handwriting is not particularly legible. Found. A gold ring under the common room sofa. If it's yours, let me know. But no false claims, please. Fiona. I did lose a gold ring a few weeks ago. I hope this is the one. I'll have to ask Fiona about it. Morning, Fiona. Good morning, darling. You're up early. Yeah, I couldn't sleep. Are you feeling all right? You look a little pale. I had a bad nightmare. Again? Well, you're not the only one, darling. Mickey woke me up screaming in the middle of the night. She wouldn't go back to sleep until I made her a cup of herbal tea. Nightmares? Apparently. But she refuses to tell me what they were. I think she's embarrassed. That doesn't sound like Mickey. I know, darling. Don't tell her I said so. But I've never seen her so agitated in my life. She scared the hell out of me. I don't know why I have nightmares. I guess they could be stress-related. After all, the exhibition's right around the corner. Oh, yes. The school exhibition. How's that going? God, don't ask. I have no idea how I'm going to finish my painting on time. I haven't felt inspired in ages. I think you work too hard, darling. You need to relax once in a while. Live! Enjoy your youth. There's inspiration to be found in hedonism, you know. No, I don't know, but apparently you do. <laughs> I'm an authority on the subject, darling. Ask Mickey. She'll tell you I don't lift a finger around the place unless I absolutely have to.
Where's everybody this morning? Mickey's tied up in the basement. Mind you, she's not literally tied up, of course. Although, that is a tempting thought. Are you getting into your sexual fantasies here, Fiona? Because it's a little too early in the morning for that, don't you think? Sorry, I just can't help myself. Anyway, the plumbing is... You probably noticed when you took a shower, yeah? There's no hot water. So Mickey's working on that. Getting knee-deep in putrid canal water is her job. Thank God. What about Charlie? He up yet? No, he's still sleeping. And Emma just went to bed. I saw her come in when I was making breakfast. Do you know who she's seeing now? I don't know. Some guy? Those lads I see her with, darling. She's too good for those assholes. I wish she'd find herself a man who'd treat her right for once. She hasn't had much luck with love, no? She's a magnet for creeps, and she's so pretty. They prey on her, you know, bastards. I've tried to talk to her about it, but Emma's impulsive. She doesn't listen. She's just as headstrong as you and me, darling, but I'm sure she'll be all right. She's smart and resourceful, and not afraid to speak up for herself. Shouldn't you be outside enjoying the good weather? You joking? Bollocks to that. I'll stay inside until September, thank you very much. It's too bloody hot. Can I ask you a few questions? Why, certainly, darling. About what? Tell me about Emma. Emma? Why, she's your best friend, darling. I don't know what to tell you that you don't already know. You girls are so close. That's true. The day we met, we clicked instantly. It was strange, but cool. Like me and Mickey, then? Except for the sex, of course. That's a pretty big except for Fiona. Oh, I guess so. She's the crazy one, Emma is. Not crazy as in mad as a hatter, but crazy in a good way. Fun to be around. Emma's always been a little weird. Exactly, darling. She's a flirt, too, and the boys seem to drop like flies at her feet. No wonder. She's a real looker, I don't have to tell you. I'm sure she could have been a model if she'd wanted, but she's an artist, and a good one, too. I really think she'll be a successful artist. Her sculptures are getting a lot of attention. Anything else you can tell me about Emma? She ought to be a little more careful sometimes. She's a flirt, and although she doesn't mean any harm, some lads don't take too well to being teased and rejected. You should tell her that, though, being her best friend and all. I have told her. She won't listen. No. She does worry me a little, but she's a big girl and she can take care of herself. I'm certainly happy to have her living here. Next to you and Charlie, she's my favorite tenant. What did you think of me when we first met? That's a peculiar question, isn't it? I thought you were quite lovely. I still do, darling. Do you remember the day I arrived? Of course, darling. It wasn't that long ago, and I'm not senile quite yet. It was in May, wasn't it? Charlie referred you to me, and you were quite at a loss. First day in the city, wasn't it? I remember. You looked like a lost puppy. Puppy? Me? When I saw you lugging that suitcase across the bridge, my heart went out to you. I'm glad you came here. You could have been lost anywhere else. How long have you known Charlie? Oh, he's one of our oldest tenants. It's close to three years, I believe, since he moved in. Charlie is always in a good mood, and he's such a gentleman. I agree. He's an actual, genuine gentleman. And you don't see a lot of gentlemen these days, trust me. You have a very good friend in him, darling. Perhaps even more than a friend. What do you mean, more than a friend? Not for me to say, darling. If you don't realize it yet, you will. What's up with Zack Lee? Zack? I think we both feel the same way about him, darling. He's not actually a bastard. If he was, I'd have had him out of here in an instant. But he is an ass and a stuck-up, pompous, arrogant wanker. 
My thoughts, exactly. Aside from that wanker bit. Still, he pays his rent on time and he doesn't make a lot of noise. He keeps to himself. And most importantly, he's shit scared of me. So I can't just kick him out. Tell me a little bit about yourself, Fiona. Me? Why? It's not much to say, darling. I love my job, I love Venice, and I love being with Mickey. I'm a happy girl. Sure, sometimes I wish I could go back to England to see my family, but that's water under the bridge, so to speak. I'm very happy with myself and my life here in Newport. How long have you and Mickey been together? Mickey and I have been together since I was 19. She was in her late 30s then. The older, wiser, worldly woman. I found her sweet and charming and intriguing. When I finally realized she was neither of those things, it was too late. <laughs> I was in love. She stole me away from my dreary British inner city life, and she brought me here. She was no knight in shining armor, that's for sure. But she knew how to treat me like a woman. You guys make a great couple. You think so, darling? Yes, I guess we do. And the sex is amazing. You never get tired of talking about your sex life, do you? Never. And if I ever do, please shoot me. Can you tell me something about the border house? That's one of my favorite topics, darling. What precisely do you want to know? What made you decide to run a boarding house? That's a long story. One of the reasons Mickey and I got together was that we shared a passion for the classic English country inns. You know, quaint, weathered buildings, funny old ladies, and oddly suggestive names like the Lazy Cock. <laughs> so why come here to the big city? To America? We wanted to create a place with a similar atmosphere and hospitality here in Newport. Like a safe house for people like you and I to call home, if only for a short while. So we discussed different options for a few months, and then we decided we wanted to start a boarding house for young, penniless students and artists. You decided you wanted to do that here in Venice? We knew that Venice was the place for us long before we came here, but the hard part was finding a building cheap enough. And this building was available? Not at first. Like most of the buildings in Venice, this one used to be a factory, but when we first looked at it, a local company was planning to turn it into a bar and nightclub. It was so perfect for our purposes, though, that we appealed to the Venice Borough Council, and after outlining our plans, they gave us the go-ahead at a reduced price, provided we kept our promises regarding our tenants. What inspired the name Border House? That came quite naturally when we saw the place. It's on the border between two worlds, isn't it? Between Venice and the city itself. And at the same time, I also believe we're on the border between two more abstract worlds. Between art and spirit on the one hand, and science and technology on the other. That's very poetic, Fiona. Yes, I've practiced. I may be an inner city girl, but I can philosophize and bullshit with the best of them. Do you and Mickey own the place together? We own it together, yes. And we've shared the responsibilities between us. Mickey takes care of the maintenance of the building, and I busy myself with the administrative tasks. I also take care of the day-to-day -day management of our tenants, like deciding whether or not to let someone rent a room. And, of course, the unpleasant business of booting someone out. I thought you enjoyed that part. Yes, all right. In some cases I do, but not always. It can get quite messy. Thanks for the information. I'm glad I could help you out, darling. What can you tell me about Venice? I don't really know much about the history of Venice. You should really ask someone with an interest in local affairs. What I do know is that this whole neighborhood used to be an industrial area and that about 100 years ago, they converted most of the buildings into residences for students and the homeless. And it's a nice place to live, certainly. Friendly people, liberal attitudes, great clothing stores, quite perfect, aside from that dreadful stench from the canals in the summertime. 
What's the story behind my apartment? Your apartment? It's more a room than anything else. Not much more than a large closet, really. It's not that small. It's one of our smallest rooms, but it's cheap and it's on a nice floor. I hope you're happy there. I like it. It's convenient. And it's got a... an interesting view. That's nice to hear, darling. As for the story behind it, no unexplained deaths or hidden pirate treasures, I'm afraid. Just a long string of students on a tight budget. Do you like Newport? The city? Oh, I stay in Venice most of the time. It's easy to forget we're just a tiny little pocket in the middle of a sprawling urban wasteland. But do I like it? I think Newport is one of the great cities of our age. Love it or hate it, you can't argue with that. And which one is it? Love or hate? I haven't decided yet, darling. Ask me again in another 15 years. Perhaps I'll have an answer then. <laughs> I don't have any more questions right now. Don't hesitate asking if there's something else you want to know. I'd better get going. Off to school. Yeah, there are no more classes this semester, but I have to finish my painting by next Thursday. For what it's worth, darling, good luck. And don't work too hard, all right? I saw this note on the corkboard. I think the ring might belong to me. I'm sorry, I have to ask, but could you describe the ring? Sure thing. It says Sweet Sixteen. My dad gave it to me. I think it was the only birthday of mine he remembered, or at least acknowledged. Yes, that's the one. I found it under the sofa when I was vacuuming. Here you are, darling. Thanks. It's not worth much, but it's got a certain sentimental value for me. It's a very pretty ring. Yeah, yeah it is. My dad never gave me anything pretty before or since. He must have won a poker game or something that day. You know, it's strange. I don't hate him. He's a bastard and he treated me like crap almost every single day of my life. But I don't hate him. I feel sorry for him. Why? Because he doesn't know how to love. He can't love anybody or anything. And because he'll be miserable every second of every minute of every day until the day he dies. God, I'm glad that life is behind me. Never have to see him again. No, that doesn't sound right. I've made a choice not to see him again. Ever. Yes, that's a pressure gauge. It's at 100. That's percent, I guess. 100% pressure? It won't budge. The pressure's probably too high. Oh. It seems the clamp served a purpose after all. Hm, what a surprise. Oye, senorita. Yes? How are you this morning, senorita bonita? I'm fine. And you? Sunshine and pretty senoritas give an old man like me the blues. I like my days cold and rainy. In fact, I think I prefer the world to be in black and white. Like an old movie? Like all good movies. But tell me, Senorita Ryan, how would you describe your perfect day? Hot and sunny like this one. Well then, you should be happy to be alive today, yes? It is a perfect day. 
But you are not happy, are you? You are troubled by nightmares. What? You are afraid of them. You even fear your dreams may be real. Who told you about my nightmares? No one. I can tell from looking into your eyes. I see the ghosts that haunt you. I don't know who you've been talking to, but from now on, stay the hell away from me in my personal life. No puedo, señorita Ryan. You have a destiny. Destiny? I don't care what you think. Just, just leave me alone. If you don't face them, I'm afraid your nightmares will continue. Soon they will appear to you even when you're awake. You need some serious help, you know that? We all do, April. That's the reason we are here, you and me. That's it. I don't have to listen to this. Perdóname. I've upset you. We didn't think you'd react this way. I hope we can talk again soon. I don't think so, no. Please, think about it. And señorita, cuidado. Be careful. somebody toss out a perfectly good work glove with just one big hole in it. What a t Emma's really good with the holo sculptor, and her imagination is so vivid. Good thing we're best friends, or I might be jealous. Hiya. Emma? Hi! I didn't expect to see you here today. Me neither. Are you busy? Nah. Well, I am. But I was about to wrap up for today anyway. Why? What's going on? I have an important message for you. Yeah? From whom? Believe it or not, girlfriend, but it's from Cortez. Excuse me? He said to tell you that he wants to meet you, these are his exact words, where children visualize their dreams. Visualize dreams? What's that supposed to mean? Me? I was hoping you would know. Did he talk to you about nightmares? No. Why? I don't know. It's just... 
My dreams are really starting to bother me. There you go again with dreams. You're obsessing, April. They're just dreams. Sometimes a banana is just a banana. And a dragon is just a dragon. What's dragons got to do with it? Oh, don't tell me you had a dream about dragons. A dragon. A talking dragon. I'm gonna regret this, but what happened in your dream? Well, there was a dragon. I think we established that already. You had a dream about a dragon. Not just any dragon, though. A talking dragon. Yep, we've been through that. Talking dragon covered. What did it say? She. It was a she, a female dragon. What, you could tell from the skirt, high heels, and lipstick? Don't mock me, Emma. She said something to me, something about being the mother of the future. She probably said time to get up and go to school, April. If you don't want to take my dreams seriously, I'll just stop telling you about them. Is that a promise? Like you're in any position to make fun of my dreams? Have you looked at your sculptures lately? Oh, that's low. I'd punch you out if I wasn't so hungry. You want to go get some lunch at the Fringe? I'll drop by after I clean up around here. I'll be there for a while, so bye. dream, I think. Hi, Charlie. April. Nice to see you, girl. You know, I came to wake you this morning, but you'd already left. Early bird catches the worm. No, early bird finishes the damn painting on time. <laughs> have you seen Cortez around? As a matter of fact, I have. And he was asking for you. He asked about me? Yeah, where you were. He had a message for you. I told him to give it to Emma, that she would be more likely to bump into you. I got it, but I have no idea what it means. Cortez can be a little strange. Do you have any idea where kids would be able to, um... Visualize their dreams? Maybe in therapy? I don't think that's it, Charlie. Then I don't know. Do you know where he was going? No, but he seemed interested in that poster next to the jukebox. They put it up earlier today. What poster did you say he was interested in? The one right next to the jukebox. Thanks. Any time, April. How's work going today? Aside from the trouble with the plumbing, 
everything's been peaceful. Emma's here with Marcus and Isabel. Other than that, I mean, it's been a quiet morning. Everyone must be home out of the sun, yeah? Or on holiday. Perfect time for it, too. The city's just boiling in July, and it gets even hotter in August. You should have stayed out in the country until the autumn, girl. It's cooler out there, yeah? Yeah, the summers were cooler back home. Uh, I remember my home. It got so hot sometimes. My father worked as a volunteer fireman, and sometimes he'd borrow the old truck from the garage. He'd fill it with spring water from the river up in the hills, and then he would hose me and my sisters down with ice-cold water. <laughs> We'd laugh and scream and run around, and the funny thing is, his eyes light up and he'd be so proud of himself. He could be so good. And he could be so bad. On those days, I loved him so much. They were the good days. You doing anything special tonight? Working. I should really be at rehearsal, but I need the money. I'm going home for a week before school starts in September. Right, you told me. Well, that's great. It's been years since your last trip home, right? Yeah, right. You remember well, girl. Four years. My father and I, well, we haven't been on good terms since I left. I know how that feels. Isn't it such a cliché, though? I don't look forward to seeing him again, but it will be nice to be back with the rest of the family. Especially my sisters, you know, and my mom. Mind if I ask you a few questions, Charlie? Why would I mind, girl? What's your take on Cortez? Why do you want to talk about Cortez? I don't know him that well. He's been around for as long as I can remember, but I really never talked to the man. Do you think he's as crazy as some people say? No, he's not crazy. Just a little eccentric. He doesn't give a donkey's ass what people think or say about him. And that's cool. I don't know. I have a feeling there's a lot more to Cortez than what he wants us to believe. That man has had an eventful life, I'm sure. Anything else that comes to mind about Cortez? What else? I don't know what to tell you, girl. When he's not talking about books, he talks about old movies. He loves the classics, calls them real art. What was it about me that made you want to be my friend, Charlie? Everything, girl. You're a sweet peach. <laughs> no, it's true. I liked you from the very beginning. When you first came into the cafe with a suitcase in each hand, lost and bewildered, God, thanks for reminding me. I was such a country bumpkin. No, everyone who comes to Venice looks like that, girl. This is the village of the damned, don't you know? <laughs> How long have you known Emma? I met Emma about a year ago when she started studying at Vava. She moved into the room just opposite mine, and we became friends almost immediately. I like her a lot, and the two of you are the best friends I've ever had. Thanks, Charlie. The same goes for me. Did you ever tell Emma that? Yeah, I told her, and she jokes about it. That's just Emma. I know she appreciates me telling her, though. Does Emma's behavior ever worry you? She can seem a little out of control from time to time, but she's smarter than people give her credit for. I think she's able to take good care of herself. She's a brilliant artist. Her sculptures are inventive and beautiful. I know. Sometimes I'm in awe. They just don't seem to match her personality. She's a deep person, but she hides it well. She's more comfortable being a ditzy teenager than a professional artist. But around the two of us, sometimes she lets the disguise drop. I love her when she does that. Do you like living in Venice? I love Venice. I've been here three years now, and I haven't grown tired of it yet. I don't know if I ever will. 
Venice is like a college campus. There are so many young people here from all over the world. And the mix of nationalities and ideologies and ethnicities is refreshing and inspiring. The fact that we're also right in the middle of one of the great cities on Earth is just a bonus. Call Newport whatever you want, at least it's alive, and there's always something going on. Yeah, Venice is my kind of place, and I'm not planning on leaving anytime soon. At least not as long as all my friends are living here. What about you, Charlie? What about me? Yeah, when was the last time you talked about yourself? I don't talk about myself, girl. You know that. Still, I'd like to talk about you for a bit. If you want, just in general, or is there anything in particular you want to know? What's your biggest dream? A dark stage, a packed auditorium, and a single spotlight. Dancing, girl, don't you know? I'm a good dancer, but I need to be among the best to make it out in the real world. So I'll keep studying and I'll keep working as a waiter to support my studies, just like you. How did you end up in Venice? At home, there wasn't much professional training available for dancers. And my father, he was not happy about my choice of career. He wanted me to work in the factories like him and his father. Out here in Venice, everyone's got their own dreams. And people are supportive of each other no matter how crazy those dreams might be. Your dream isn't crazy at all, Charlie. You're already halfway there. But I still have a long way to go. You're right, girl. I can make it if I work hard enough. So can you. Because we're both just so damn talented. <laughs> Are you happy working here at the cafe? We make decent money, if that's what you mean. I don't want to be a bartender for the rest of my life, obviously. But yeah, I'm happy I have a job. And you work here too, so I get to hang out with my friend, right? If it wasn't for that, I don't know if I'd be able to do it. Hard work and lousy pay. The hours are flexible, and like you said, I get to hang out with you and my other friends. That's all I wanted to know, Charlie. Okay. Thanks, Charlie. I have to get going, Charlie. Take care, all right? Remember, you're supposed to get paid today. Stan's not gonna remember unless you bug him about it. Settle this one for us, April. When did Royne Dale release Sidetracked? 04, right after the Morning Star exile, those sons of bitches. With blood on their boots, yeah. <laughs> Told you so, Marcus. You said 03. I was closer than you. 07, and you call yourself a fan. I don't. Did you speak with Zach today? Why? He was upset. Called you a stuck-up bitch. He what? You gotta be kidding me. I wasn't even that rude to him. He thinks so. So that even if you came crawling to his door, he wouldn't give you the time of day. Said you called him an asshole. Oh, God. I really don't know when to shut my mouth, do I? Who cares? It's Zack. He hates you, so what? No great loss. That's true. So, what else is going on? What are you doing this afternoon? Actually, I came by to see if I could find Cortez. What's with you and this guy? You'd rather spend time with him than us? I have to find out what the message means. Don't look at me. I don't know anything except what I already told you. Ask Charlie. He spoke with Cortez earlier. What are you doing? Staying here. What else? I'm meeting a friend later, but that's not until 9. We're waiting for Isabel and then we're gonna eat. But I guess you're not hungry. No. Figures. I don't know why I even bother asking. 
Who's this friend you're meeting later? Don't tell me it's that guy you were out with last night. Are you gonna tell me I shouldn't get involved with men like him? No, no, of course not. I'm not your... You don't need me to tell you that, Emma. Well, I wish you would, because you're right. I shouldn't, he's a bastard. But he's so cute, and charming, and... You know, very good in bed. I, I just can't help myself. But he's not a keeper, don't worry about that. It's just this thing, just a fling. Mind if I ask you some questions, Emma? Like I don't tell you everything that's going on anyway? Of course you can ask me questions. Like, duh. What's your... Uh, take on Cortez? My take on Cortez? What's that, like a diplomatic way of saying what the F is this guy's glitch? Sure. Let's go with that one. You know, I think Cortez is a barrel of laughs. In a good way. Everybody thinks they got him all figured out, you know? Like he's the resident weirdo. But I know that just ain't true. I've talked with Cortez, and the guy is brilliant. He's weird, yeah, and he's up in the clouds, and I think he believes in aliens, which is cool, but girl, he's smart. I mean, I'm not talking professor smart here. I'm talking real life, seen it all, been there, done that, smart, useful smart, experienced smart. And, ooh, I gotta tell you, the guy's cultured. Ask him about anything, art, music, movies, books, he's current on most topics. Which scares me, because it seems he's always just, I don't know, hanging around doing nothing. He rarely goes anywhere. And it's like he's waiting for something. Or someone. Yeah, maybe Jerry Garcia. <laughs> You're bad. No, I don't think he's a doper. I mean, listen to the guy. What he says may sound a little... out there, but the way he says it... No, he's not on Amethyn, that's for sure. And one more thing? He is cute. He's what? Cute. Emma, he's like 60. Did you ever see his eyes? Those are not the eyes of an old man. And so what if he's 60? He's better looking than most of the guys I date and so much nicer. Then I think you've been swimming in the shallow end of the gene pool for too long, Emma. I mean, come on, a 60-year-old screwball with a ponytail and an exotic accent? Hello? <sighs> well, we'll see. Did you speak with Charlie today? Yeah, for a few minutes. Why? Nothing. Just wondered is all. Uh, April, did he say anything to you at all about what about mm, nothing i mean i don't know anything which isn't true because i i don't lie but he ugh, forget it if we were having this conversation in a movie i'd be going like shit girl get your act together open your eyes but i don't think that's a good idea not in real life because real life has a nasty habit of hurting people's feelings Did you finish your sculpture for the exhibit? Pretty much. I'm happy with it, and I know that if I go back and keep working on it, I'll just kill it. So I think I'll leave it alone. You? You know what? Don't ask. I'm praying it'll finish itself one of these days. Sure. Could happen. It could so happen. But I wouldn't count on it. <sighs> I'll have it ready in time. Yes, you will, or I'll kick your ass so hard that you'll... Okay, I got it, I got it! Thanks for the inspiration. Thanks, Emma. Thanks for what? For talking to you? Girlfriend, what the hell is the matter with you? Snap out of it! I gotta run. See you around, stranger. Roma Gallery presents Growing Pains, an exhibition by and for kids and teenagers. Could this be what Cortez was talking about? Where kids visualize their dreams? I think this may be it. Where's the Roma Gallery located? I never say no to a complimentary ticket.
What you doing here? I... You ain't working this afternoon, are you? I don't want my employees work 24 hours a day. Go, get sleep. But I'm just... Damn, woman, do I have to babysit you? It's nice to see you too, Stanley. No, I'm not working today. I just came by to... Oh, don't ever say those two words when I'm around. I don't think my ulcer can take it. You? And nice? That's funny. No, working and not. Don't use those two words in the same sentence. Damn, I get creeps even when I say them. I'd like to get paid. Damn, woman, don't you know I got a migraine already? Paid? God damn it. Why'd they have to make that word sound so obscene? Listen, why don't you leave old Stan alone, huh? They make me feel a whole hell of a lot better. Choo, choo, be good little girl, hmm? I'd still like to get paid, though. Mighty man, our woman. You really know how to rub it in. God damn it. Yeah, all right. You got your time sheet? <clears throat> yes? 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 Let's see it. God damn, you think I'm gonna take your word for a woman? Here you are, my time sheet. Don't say that word too loud, sweetheart. You're killing me. Let's see. What is this? Huh? No, 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 no. Did I sign this? What are you thinking? So? At least it doesn't look like it's been forever. Thanks. Thanks? Where's my money? Oh, you ain't getting it now. Next week, buddy. I write down this amount in my ledger. Don't you worry your head from it. Forget that. I quit. You're quitting? You can't quit. You work for me. Nobody quits this job, honey. I can quit. And I'm quitting. I quit. Damn, woman. You know how hard it is to find people to take a crappy job like this one? I need you. Just as much as you need the money? All right. Jesus, I give you your damn money. What was it? Fifty bucks? Three hundred and seventy-five dollars, Stanley. Cash. Oh, sure. Cash. Three hundred... Are you sure? I pay you guys way too much. All right, give me your CC. Thank you, Stanley. Fine, sure. Whatever. Hey, just I mean it. You free tonight? Wanna pull a shift? Sandra, she out sick and I need a replacement pronto. How about it? Yeah, I need the money. Great, hon. I'll see you here later. Don't forget. I love this mural, even though the motif is a little 
trite. I mean, fairy tale forests and magical dragons? Still, it's pretty. I wonder what happened to the artist. Probably making a bundle from cheesy fantasy calendars and book covers. I hope it doesn't melt or anything. It's alive! The pressure's probably too high. What a mystifying contraption, and completely absurd. What are all these valves and wheels and thingamajigs for? What grand purpose does it all serve? Without the ring, I won't be able to use this, um, machine. I'll leave it until I've finished whatever it is I'm doing here. The water tank's full. It's at 100. That's percent, I guess. 100% pressure? Clamp's keeping the hose closed, so it won't leak. Not leaving my gold ring. Somebody's going to have to replace that cable eventually. I know that 
duck? Bon voyage, ducky! Get a weekly pass, just in case. $15 subtracted from cash card. You are now free to travel on all Metroline subways for exactly one week. And remember, genetic forgery is a federal crime. Keep your genes clean. Have a nice day. There's a high voltage cable running parallel with the rail. And something's gotten stuck between them. It looks like a large iron key. I was a wee lass. I tried fishing a couple of times in the pond behind my house, but I never caught anything. I hope my luck's improved. That's a pretty cool catch. Settling to be so aware of myself. You too. I'm not getting on the train until I know exactly where I'm going. It's the address. The gallery is located near the Watertown Bridge. It's all the way over in West Venice, if I remember correctly. I'm gonna have to catch the Metro Line subway to get there. Ubiquitous. There's no escape anywhere. Hello, sir. Sir. I'll just leave my ticket here then, shall I? Yes, I guess I'll do that.
About time you showed up. About time? I spent more than... Mira, this painting. Right here. Look. Why? Just look at it. Who's the artist? A boy named Warren Hughes. Not so long ago, I knew him and his family quite well. But he does not paint anymore. What am I looking for? What do you see? I see an oil painting of two humans locked in an embrace. That's all you see? But there's so much more. Look. Look. I see a statement on loss. The guy, he's hugging a girl. And by all rights, he should be happy, but he's not. He's probably already mourning the loss of her, even though that's still somewhere in his future. Statements? Who cares about his statements? Tell me what you see. I see a guy hugging a girl. And? They're probably boyfriend-girlfriend, and she's dumping him. He looks really depressed. Yes, yes. Forget the story. What do you see? I see art. Art, yes. And beyond that, beyond art. Truth? Truth. Exactly. A deeper truth. This painting, this particular work of art, speaks a deeper truth. It has a soul. How can a painting have a soul? It has a soul because it has an identity. It has a heart. The memory of this painting will survive beyond this moment. It will linger in your mind, become part of the tapestry of your subconscious. It has made a lasting impression on you. And you're not quite sure why. It's just a painting by some kid. It's not as if it's a Picasso or a Monet. Now your arguing technique. Not every painting by Van Gogh or Michelangelo is real art either. Although they all demonstrate great technique and, and craftsmanship. And the scribbled drawings of a five-year-old child are rarely technically impressive, but they may still have a soul. They may still be real art. So you're saying real art is not defined by the skill of the artist? Then what is art? If just anybody can create something more real than artists who spent their entire lives developing their skills? Art is still the work of artists. And skill, craftsmanship, technique, those things are critical to the success of an artist's work. But alone, those things are merely pretense. For something to be real, to be truthful, the artist must transfer, shift part of him or herself into the work to transcend the illusion and reach for the truth of art. And what is the truth of art? Who knows? I've been asking myself that question for years. Excuse me? You don't even know? And what's all this about all the questions and lectures on truth and delusion? For that matter, why did you ask me to come down here in the first place? Because... Actually, you didn't even ask me to come down. I spent my entire afternoon traveling all over Venice, deciphering a cryptic message, spending money I don't have on a subway ticket, only to have to stand here and listen to... to... You saw something this afternoon. A waking dream, and you can't explain it. That's why you are here, isn't it? Yeah? Good. And I'll do my best to explain everything. Just be patient. My point about art and truth is this, April. Some things look real, but are not. 
and other things may appear to be of no consequence at all, but are in fact invaluable. Like Warren's painting here, and your dreams. There is both truth and illusion in dreams, and in the images they create. The problem is in sorting the one from the other. You're telling me my dreams are true? I'm telling you there are things afoot, and that you need help in sorting the truth from the illusions. My help. Well, that figures. Good. I was hoping you'd understand. No. Actually, I didn't understand a single word. You talk about art, and truth, and dreams, and illusions, and I still don't understand what it all has to do with me. There are things happening, yes, and I came here because I thought, maybe you're crazy enough to believe me, to help me. I don't know, sort through the debris and come up with the plausible explanation. But no, you tell me my dreams might be true, that I need your help, and that there are things afoot. I mean, who says afoot? I've never heard anybody use the word before. There are things afoot. Está bien. I understand your reluctance to believe me, senorita. But I cannot convince you here, now. Meet me tomorrow. What? Meet me tomorrow, and I will tell you everything. Not again. No way. But you will. Because you are compelled to do so by your own curiosity. Because you are drawn to mystery. And because despite your skepticism, you believe I have the answer to all your questions, yes? No. No, I don't care. I just want to have a normal life. No nightmares, no visions, no strangers telling me that things are afoot. Comprende, amigo? Ay, Dios mío. Is that the time? I've got to run, Senorita Ryan. I'll see you tomorrow, then. I said... Goodbye. There's absolutely nothing out there. Nothing. Oh, there's a city, an entire world even. But nothing. Settling to be so... All scrubbed and ready to work, sir. You'll be on the floor tonight, honey. Start taking orders. Cortez and get him to explain what the hell's going on. Insane or not, he's the only person I can talk to about this.
Good morning. Did you ever question your own sanity, April? I mean, did you ever wonder if you were going mad? I'm quite certain I am insane. I'm not trying to amuse you, April. I'm really serious. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, I felt like that. Many times. Then explain it to me. How do you deal with it? Do you lock it away inside yourself, or do you talk to someone about it? Because I'm at a loss here, April. I don't know what to do. You have to give me more to go on than that. I don't know how I can put it into words. What I saw... What did you see? Last night, right here in this room, Mickey and I, we were watching a movie, a documentary about the new synthetic rainforests in Mexico. You know, the ones that produce eight times the oxygen of the original organic forests. I've heard about... But I'm digressing. Anyway, about halfway through the movie, like I said, I'm probably going completely bonkers. This room became a... a it was more like a vision, really, and I'm sure it wasn't holographic. What kind of vision? This room turned into a forest. What? It was like the forest came out of the screen and into the room. Like being in the middle of a hollow theater, but with added resolution, hallucinogenic effects, and... and smells. It only lasted for a few seconds, and then it all just disappeared. Did anyone else see this? Mickey did, but she refuses to speak of it. Says it was just our imagination acting up, which leaves me wondering how long it'll take before I end up in a mental institution. Something equally weird happened at the cafe last night. What was that? Last night, at the cafe, right in front of everybody, this creature appeared out of thin air, just like your forest. It was only there for a few seconds, and then it disappeared, but everybody saw it. Everybody. Oh, my. What's going on, love? I don't scare easily, but this is really getting to me. Don't know, but whatever it is, I think, I'm pretty sure, Cortez is involved. Cortez? How is he involved? I don't know that either. I'd love to find out, though. Have you seen Cortez today? No, darling. I don't think he's around. Do you have any idea where Cortez is? Sorry, he could be anywhere. Well, he does enjoy going uptown to watch old movies in some revival cinema, but where that is, I wouldn't know. Who'd know? Perhaps Zack. He is, after all, the self-appointed film expert around here. You should talk to him, darling. Great. Zack. My very best friend in the whole wide world. Could you tell Cortez I'm looking for him? Certainly, darling. If I happen to see him. Thanks. What other weird things have happened lately? Little things, like movement in the corner of your eye that's gone when you turn your head. And noises, the kind you're not supposed to hear in the city. Animal noises. Wild animals. And once, this was very early in the morning, mind, a few days ago, I looked down into the canal and saw what looked like an underwater city. As I looked at it, it dissolved into ripples of water. Scary. You're telling me, darling. I'm scared of cockroaches, for God's sake. What do you think this does to my nerves? I have to get going. Take care of yourself out there, darling.
I never imagined I'd be doing this in a million years. Well, well, what do you know? The princess comes knocking after all. Yes, I finally realized what I was missing out on. About time, too. So, you, uh, ready to hang out? Just do me one favor first, okay? Well, give me a reason to, babe. A reason? You want a reason? Okay. What about a date? Yeah. Good. Tonight. Uh, sure. Tonight. I'll meet you at the... pavilion, was it? And, uh, are you gonna put out? What? Well, I mean, if I'm gonna use my VIP passes and my pills, babe, I just gotta know if it'll be worth it or not. You on? We'll see, Zach. Yeah, just don't do a Houdini and vanish on me, babe. If you're a no-show and I wait around for you all night, I end up looking like an asshole. And that wouldn't make me very happy. I'll be a good girl and show. Smart. So, uh, what do you want to know? You know where I can find Cortez? Cortez, yeah? I knew there was something going on between you guys. Don't be ridiculous, Zack. It's not what you think. Whatever. Hey, like I give a shit? You're with me tonight, and by tomorrow morning, I don't think you'll find that old creep so appealing anymore. So, where's Cortez? Uh, when he's not outside reading or whatever the hell he does, he's usually at the Mercury Theater. They show old movies on real celluloid stock through a projector. Like in the fucking Middle Ages. Where's this theater located? I don't remember the street it's on. It's been ages since I was there last. But you'll find it if you head out the East Gateway from Metro Circle. It's close to the Radio Power Building, and there are tons of adult stores in the area. Actually, if you're not too busy, you could pick up something for us to watch tonight. Something really filthy. Zack, I don't think... Hey, whatever. I was just kidding, yeah? Babe, you got a major bug up your ass. Get a fucking sense of humor, yeah? I'll keep that in mind. Thanks for the tip... and the info. Just be at the pavilion by ten, okay? I don't like waiting around for babies like you. Got a million better things to do. And it wouldn't be a good idea for you to ditch me. Not a good idea at all. I'm sure Stan won't notice if I dig gently into his supply. He's got crates of these in the back.
Would you believe this is the first thing I saw when I came to Newport? Big city? Gotta love it. Excuse me. Yes, huh? Oh, jeez. Hold on there one second, lady. Dang, Marquis. Light up! Good. Now stay that way, you hear? Do you work at the theater? Yes, huh? I'm Freddy. Freddy Mellon. My mama, Mrs. Dottie Mellon, she owns the theater. Yep, I reckon she does, uh-huh. She owns it, and she be running it by her own self, like a, a real proprietor. I reckon I help out some, of course. Yep. And what do you do, sir? I'm the usher. And I also takes care of sweeping and cleaning up after the show. My mama, Mrs. Dottie Mellon, she says she reckon I'm a regular jack of all trades. I'll tell you what, I think she's right about that, uh-huh. Is the theater open now? No, I reckon it ain't, lady. It don't open till this evening. Ain't nobody in there either. I reckon that wouldn't be legal. Do you know a man called Cortez? No. I can't say as I does, lady. Ain't never met him. Now, I reckon I'd like to get on with my sweeping, uh-huh. But I'm supposed to meet him here. Are you sure you don't know him? Look, lady. I reckon you you should just mind your own bee's knees and get. I told you, I ain't seen Cortez today. You said you didn't know Cortez. I, I reckon I don't know nobody by that name, so, so I tell you what. I'd mighty appreciate it if, if you'd stop bothering me and let me get on with my work. Jesus, Mary, and baby Joseph, I reckon the whole dang world is, wants to find Cortez today. Thanks, anyway. Yes, um, I'll tell you what. You go on now and let Freddie Mellon do his sweeping before his mama, Mrs. Dotty Mellon, get all P.I.S.T. off. Hi there. Having fun? Didn't your mother teach you not to talk to strangers? Yes, yeah, she did. Then what are you doing here? Get lost. Are you on the job? On the job? What do you mean, on the job? You know, an assignment, stakeout, undercover operation. I suggest you get the hell out of here now, ma'am, before things get ugly. Was that a threat? Are you threatening me? Yes, I am. Hello again. Christ, don't you ever quit? What is it now? Don't you get tired of hanging around here all day long? No, ma'am. So you're completely fine. There's nothing you'd want. That's right. Nothing at all? Nothing at all. Not even a bite to eat? Just had a full lunch, ma'am. Thanks for asking. So you just had lunch? 
That's right. That cool cow. What did you have? A triple whammy cow patty with a side order of grease onions and a lard bingo cola. No ice. What about fries? And a double order of cheese and fried taters, yeah. Tastiest damn fries you're ever likely to find. Soaking in melted goat cheese. And you had this... when? Oh, about an hour ago. And you don't feel, um, the urge to go? No, ma'am, no. My bowels are genetically enhanced and require only perfunctory attention. The burger filled you up good? You don't have the munchies? Well, now you mention it, I have a craving for sweets. I didn't have time for my usual cool cow strawberry pie with whipped cream chocolate sauce and a scoop of ice cream. Wait a second. What am I telling you all this for? Who the hell are you anyway? Hey, get out of here, ma'am. Right this minute or else... Is this a threat? I think that was a threat. A very serious one, ma'am. Just trash. Lady, don't you keep playing with that thing now, you hear? Leave it be. Would you like a candy? Hey, yeah. That'll hit the spot. What the hell? The taste! Sickening! I feel kinda... Christ! Hey, what... What the hell do you think you're doing? Did you just throw a rock at my head? Now, I tell you what, you shouldn't have done that. I reckon that was a bad mistake. You should have seen him run, lady. I reckon I ain't never seen nobody run that fast. And he was clutching at his buttocks like he had the runs or something. <laughs> he, he even lost his stupid old hat in the gutter. <laughs> I ain't never seen anything that funny in a while. It's a fuse box. There's something wrong with the power in that box, and it looks like the theater marquee's connected to the same switch. It keeps flickering on and off.
dang marquee, light up! Hell, it gone dead on me now. I'm going to have to fix that sign proper this time round, uh-huh. I just need me a ladder and some tools from the basement. Reminds me of something, but I just can't put my finger on it. I feel an uncontrollable urge to raise my hands, though. The shadow's being cast by those garbage bags. Chased you earlier. Freddy, you'll do the monkey for you right now if, if that's what you want, uh huh? He'll do the monkey until you ask him to stop, I reckon, uh huh? Uh huh? Uh huh? Yeah, uh -huh. you! Hands up! Spread your legs! And do. You have no idea what I went through to find you. First... Do you like movies? Sure. Who doesn't? Wait a second. I was trying to tell you that... I don't much like modern movies myself. They're either too loud and expensive or too obscure and self-indulgent. But old movies, really old movies, have a charm and a simplicity that appeals to me. Listen, please don't interrupt me again. It's starting to piss me off. But I have never interrupted you, unless I've had something important to say, of course. But go ahead. What is it you wanted to talk about? Why did you make me search all over the city for you? Search for me? I've been here for hours, senorita. I haven't moved. The question ought to be, what made you go out of your way to find me? What's so appealing about old movies? Ah, now you're changing the subject. That's more my style, isn't it? 
You can be annoyingly smug at times, did you know that? Sooner or later. Of course. And I apologize for being so hard to locate today, but I had to lay low for a few hours. Does it have anything to do with the cop that was staking this place out? Yeah. So it was a good thing I didn't stick my head out the door to look for you then, no? He's gone now. Are you in some kind of trouble with the police? Wait, don't tell me. Immigration. No, senorita. Not the police. There are bigger players than the police. I don't want to know. I'm not getting mixed up with the mob or gangs or anything like that. There's not much you want to be mixed up in at all, is there? My life's complicated enough as it is, Mr. Cortez. I don't even know what I'm doing here. Answers. You want, you need, answers. You keep telling me that, but you never give me any answers. Just more questions. Like, who's out to get you? What's going on with me? How come you know so much about me? I plan to answer all your questions today, April. By the time you go to sleep tonight, your world will have changed. And nothing will ever be the same. You're just being cryptic again. It's like soap opera sex. Lots of boring dialogue, and when they finally go to bed, everything's dark and covered by blankets. You want the full Monty, then? Come with me. Come outside. No more talk. I will show you the truth. They just lead back inside. This is probably as good a place as any. At least there's no one around to see, except rats. To see what? Stand back, senorita. What for? What are you doing? Why, Alice? I'm sending you through the looking glass. What is that? Please tell me it's a hologram. It's a mirror to reflect your dreams. But I don't see anything, just light. Oh, you have to step through. Step through that? Oh no, I don't think so. This is the moment of decision, April. All time, past and present, revolves around this moment. The destiny of worlds is in your hands. But you must make the choice on your own. La vida es corta. You must decide how to live it best. All right. I'll do it. Vamos. Enter the light. Don't say that. It sounds too ominous. Just... tell me what's gonna happen. You're about to take the first step on the longest journey of your life. But don't worry. I'll be waiting right here. I must be insane to do this. Yes. It's pretty much a given. Oh, I almost forgot. When you're ready to come back, pay a visit to a friend of mine called Westhouse. Brian Westhouse.
Cortez! I have a bad feeling about this. Wait, what was the name Cortez told me to remember? Westhouse? Ryan Westhouse? I think that was it. Cortez said to look him up when I wanted to go home. Well, I want to go home now. Hello? Hi. Et tu? Emilie, tu vas? I don't understand. A cool star Kayan Paras. Inomalante Kandra. Ton Maris. Ore Tiesi Ton. Aku Kandi. Good. Niranton Alvoch. Sank Al Koda Magic. Torante. Salhe. Naven. All Tongue. Of Orta I beginning, parasim tin you. You have Thiesa I magic I Sara. I the knowledge. Aritua ya ai tue by generations e umani. Knowledge of all tongue. Now you have allowed the magic to enter your heart, and the knowledge of all tongue, ever present but dormant, to guide your ears and your tongue. I understand you. You speak English? Why didn't you just tell me straight away? <laughs> no, child. I do not speak English. I speak Naven, all tongue, the common language of Arcadia. Arcadia? Wait a second. How did I get here? What is this place and who the hell are you? Oh, my manners have abandoned me yet again. I'm afraid my preoccupation with ancient texts and the company of my fellow fathers have left me unequipped with the grace of social intercourse. Meaning what? That I have been rude. My name, dear child, is Tobias Grensret, and I am the Vestrum of the Sentinel, the Order of the Balance. We are the fathers. Ah. Uh, okay. I'm April. April Ryan. I take it this is your first shift, your first passage through the Divide? I have no idea what you're talking about, but I guess this is my first shift. I just... Then I will explain everything. Someone must. You are without guidance, without a mentor? Mentor? There's this guy Cortez. He assisted me, told me about magic and truth and dreams and portals. Crazy stuff. Well, it seemed crazy at the time, although now I... don't... Cortez? Ah, yes, Cortez. Very good, very good. Then come, let us proceed. Let me show you Mercuria, the grandest city of all ages. Explore Marcuria, April. See the sights, meet the people, and then, when you are ready, return to the temple. I will answer whatever questions you may have then.
Excuse me, Vestrum Tobias? Tobias. Just call me Tobias, please. I require no ceremony from a distinguished guest such as yourself. Did you enjoy the sights? I don't know. I'm... overwhelmed. Walking around out there, seeing with my own two eyes things that can't possibly exist. I kept thinking, it's all a dream. I'll wake up at any moment now and everything will return to normal. But then I realized, I'm still here. It's real. I can touch it. I can smell it. And you know what? It doesn't make sense. Nothing makes sense here. Magic, alien creatures, parallel worlds. I don't believe in those things. I don't believe in fairy tales. In your world, in Stark, there is no room for magic. That is, and always has been, the curse of science, the fallibility of logic and order. They leave no room for the imagination. If it does not fit into the narrow perception of the laws of nature that your world adheres to, it's a fairy tale. But then, magic has its downsides, too. It's unpredictable. It invites chaos. It puts the balance in peril in a way that science alone never could. I keep hearing about the balance, and about Stark, and Arcadia, and... This is probably gonna sound strange to you, but I'm clueless. I have no idea what this place is, or what I'm doing here, or... All I know is that something strange is happening, and... In my world, I guess. I had dreams, and the dreams felt so real, and then things started happening in real life, too. Things that shouldn't... couldn't happen, and I... I think I will begin at the very beginning. I believe that is why you were sent here. To learn, to understand, to see for yourself. Like you said, you cannot believe in this place. Well, you will. After you have learned the truth, you will. Come with me, and I will tell you the story of Earth as your books never have. And when your eyes and ears are open to the truth, perhaps your mind will follow. We can only hope. Come. This is the true story of the balance. As observed by the Sentinel, the Order of the Balance, the Fathers. The Sentinel Minstrum committed this story to the pages of the scriptures and to these temple walls thousands of years ago, so that coming generations could learn and understand their past and their future. The wall paintings we are looking at became known as the murals of the Balance, and it is through these images that I will recount our common history to you, April Ryan. The story begins and ends here, with this mural. Ages ago and in ages to come, the Earth was one, and magic and science existed side by side in nature and in all people. There was balance, and there was harmony. You're saying there was just one world then? One world, one Earth. Magic and science in balance with each other, within each and every living creature. The power to make the stars dance and to create life itself was within our grasp. But then, humankind began to exploit this divine power of two, and they saw fit to use it for their own selfish purposes. The balance of the cosmos was in peril. Unless something was done, unless man was humbled and learned to fear the power he wrought over cosmos, the twilight of chaos would fall upon Earth. It had happened before, in distant times and on distant worlds, and it would happen again. And every man, woman, and child of every people and every race would be devoured by the coming apocalypse. We were given a visitation then, the Dry Kin, having lived among us for untold generations, rose to offer their guidance and assistance in preserving the balance on our world.
The Drag? I think I've heard that name before. Drag kin. Dragon. Dragons. Whichever name they go by, they remain the eternal servants and custodians of the balance. There were four of them here on Earth. And of the four, one who would found the Order of the Balance, the Sentinel. The first Minstrum were instructed that magic and science would have to be separated before the balance collapsed and brought untold disaster. Earth would have to be split in two equal parts. Arcadia and Stark. Magic and science. Chaos and order. The first Sentinel were counted 13. Six scientists, six magicians, and one who was between. The Drag Kin, our mentor, our custodian, our learned guide. Both magic and science were needed to perform this most difficult of tasks. To split a world in two, to create two worlds from one. Wasn't the use of that kind of power dangerous to the balance? Yes. And so for this purpose, they built a tower to channel their powers and focus them on the divide that they would create. The kin had brought a disc with them, a disc forged in the fire of their world. Placed at the base of the tower and the epicenter of the divide, the disc and the tower would become one, a conduit for the flow of magic and science. At the appointed hour, the Thirteen came to the tower, and with them a woman, whose destiny was decided by the purpose to which she had been born. She would be the first guardian, the human protector of the balance, who would stay in the tower for a thousand years to watch over the two worlds, and to ensure that the flows of magic and science were always equal. And so the ritual began. One world was to become two, separated by the balance, and each world visible to the other only by way of dreams. Who was ushered into which world was not an arbitrary choice, nor one taken lightly. For the magical creatures, the choice was simple. They had to go to Arcadia. Their kind would not survive in Stark. But for others, families were torn apart, Lovers separated and friends lost for all eternity. Encircled by the Twelve and the One, and the One who would be Guardian, the disc at the base of the tower began to spin faster and faster as more and more power flowed through it until it was a blur. Darkness enveloped the tower, but the disc glowed brighter and brighter. Reality turned, and in one moment, a new reality had been created, and two new worlds born. In the tower there was silence. The original disc had disappeared, and in its place was a smaller counterpart, a similar yet different disc. Around and outside the tower the world looked different. They were now between Stark and Arcadia, between reality and dream. This was the realm of the Balance and of the Guardian, and it would be her home for the next 1,000 years. The one who was kin picked up the disc and said, This disc is a counterpart to the original disc, which has now become this realm, and the key to which has been split and divided in four. The key is the disc, and the disc is this realm. This mystified the Twelve, and the one who was kin continued. Know only this. The Guardian's realm cannot be broken unless the disc is broken. But nor can it be repaired without the disc being repaired. The four pieces that is the key will be given to the six of you who are to be taken to Arcadia for safekeeping. Yet the key will never be complete, he went on without the precious stones that adorn each piece. I will keep one, and my fellow kin, the three others. Should the day come when this realm must be repaired, or the world reunited, and that day will come, 
You will assemble the disc, and the kin will come together one last time. With that, six of the thirteen went to Arcadia, and six to Stark, and the one who would be guardian ascended to the throne. Witness the mural, where her dreams and hopes, her very soul, were locked away in the disc. In service of the balance, these traits were nothing but barriers. Through new eyes, the imbalance between the worlds was as clear as the stars themselves to the Guardian. And with one thought, she channeled chaos from Arcadia and logic from Stark into the disk and redistributed the power wherever it was needed. A new era had begun. The era of the Guardian. After they left the tower, two of the Drakkin went to Stark, the other two to Arcadia. The six who came to each world started what is now known as the Sentinel, the Order of the Balance. But while in Arcadia the Sentinel thrived, in Stark they did not. In Stark the memories of magic and the balance could not survive in the face of the new reality of natural laws of logic and of science. And soon, very soon, Arcadia became nothing more than legend, a myth, tales of fairies to recount to impressionable children, and stories to frighten and entertain around a fire. And while dreams still brought sights and sounds of Arcadia to those asleep in Stark, they were discounted as mere dreams and nothing more. So that's it? We forgot about our past and about Arcadia? And that's the way things are? And what's wrong with that? And why does magic from Arcadia seem to have begun leaking through to Stark? That is another long story. But I can tell that you are tired of stories, and so I shall be brief. As I told you, while in Arcadia, the Sentinel grew in numbers and in strength. In Stark, while flourishing for a brief time, they were soon diminished and powerless. Some of the Stark Sentinel did not take kindly to this, and they berated the Arcadian Sentinel for their politics and teachings. The Stark Sentinel wanted people to work towards reunification, while their brothers did not. So the inevitable soon came to pass, and the Stark Sentinel parted ways with their Arcadian brothers, and named themselves the Vanguard. And while at first their philosophy was not so different from ours, over the years, it changed radically. The Vanguard wanted the Divide torn down, the worlds reunited, and the return to what they called the Glorious Ages, when humankind could control the forces of Cosmos. But first, they needed their own servant in charge of the balance, their own guardian. Now, every 1,000 years, a new guardian took the place of the old one, because no one can be separated from their souls for any longer than a thousand years. Every one thousand years, a new guardian was born. The balance provided the seed from which a new fruit grew. But now, it has been two hundred years since the previous guardian, the twelfth guardian, was to be replaced. Every new child born to the balance has been taken away by the vanguard, to be studied in an attempt to control them. In every instance so far, they have failed. But the Twelfth Guardian could wait no longer. Only a short time ago, the disk in the tower shattered, and the Guardian left his throne. The balance is now untended, and we have yet to find a new Guardian. Unless we do so, the Vanguard may get their chance. And they may be able to place their own puppet on the throne, to rule the balance according to their principles. And this we cannot allow. It will mean the end of Stark and Arcadia, and the dawn of an era of chaos. Now do you see? I understand the history. I can even accept it. But I don't understand why I'm here and what Cortez wants with me. The balance is in peril, April. The Guardian has abandoned his tower. He has disappeared and there is no one to take his place. He must be reinstated to protect the balance until a new guardian may be found. And what can I do? 
I'm nobody. I've just been having a lot of bad dreams. You are a strong shifter. I have not seen your like in my lifetime. A shifter? Someone capable of opening doors between worlds. A shift. A portal between the realms of Stark and Arcadia. Are you kidding? I didn't do anything. Cortez was the one who opened the... shift? And he just waved his hands around in the air. I don't think I'd be capable of opening a portal even if I had a magic wand. Only a shifter's own power can allow her to travel. No one else can do this for her. Cortez only channeled your power to aid you. He would not be able to step through the shift himself. Even if that's true, I don't have any control over my... talent. Not yet. But in time you will. How else do you intend to travel back to your world? God, I hadn't even thought about that yet. Can you help me? I'm afraid not. Even if I could shift, I would not be able to channel through you like Cortez did. So, I'm on my own? If you have any questions, I will do my best to answer them. But aside from that... Yes. Yes, you are. That's so not cool. No, it has been unseasonably warm. If you don't mind, I will return to my studies now. Thank you for listening to an old man and his long stories. N no, thank you. It's starting to make a little bit of sense now. That is good news. Come see me again if you have any more questions. Excuse me. Do you know a man named Brian Westhouse? Westhouse? That old goat? Yes, unfortunately. What would you with him? I need to find him. I do not know where he lives. I hear somewhere on the outskirts of the city by the sea, but I cannot tell you any more than that. Who'd know about Westhouse? His whereabouts? I do not understand what you would with him. He is rude, uncultured, and ignorant. Cortez told me to look him up. Well, I do not know where he lives or frequents, but someone at the market may. He trades merchandise there, and I think he collects maps of the Northlands. Who did you say I should see about Westhouse? The map merchant that the market may know. There is one thing I must tell you, however. Few would know Westhouse by his real name. In the city, he is known as the Rolling Man, because of his strange two-wheeled vehicle. A most dreadful and dangerous contraption if I ever saw one. A bicycle? Perhaps. It has a grotesque appearance, much like the West House himself. What do you know about Cortez? Your mentor? What has he told you about himself? Not much. Nothing, in fact. He's a complete mystery to me. To learn something about someone, the best way to go about it is to ask them yourself. There is nothing I can do to enlighten you. But who is he? He is who he is. What he is. If he has not told you himself, then perhaps he does not wish you to know. It would be improper for me to divulge his secrets. You're as bad as he is. No offense. It's just frustrating. I understand. The next time you see him, tell him what you have told me. Maybe he will tell you the truth, maybe he will not. It is his choice to make. I'll see you later. You will. If you say so, then it must be true.
Maps, I got maps. Can I interest you in a map, miss? Top notch, hand drawn in quality ink by skilled sunriders. Ain't no better in all the Northlands. I'm looking for Brian Westhouse. Briar West of House? It's not on any of my maps, and I've never heard of it. Maps! It's a man, not a place, Mr. Brian Westhouse. I would most certainly remember a name as queer as that, and I don't. Get your maps while they're fresh. Can you tell me where the Rolling Man lives? Maybe, maybe not. Why? I need to find him. Sorry, guild rules. Uh, I'm not allowed to divulge any personal information about my customers. Maps! I really need to know where the rolling man lives. Sorry, can't do. Please? Pretty please? No, 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 young lady. Don't give me that doe-eyed look. Don't. Ah, uh, blasted be the balance. You're giving me that doe-eyed look, aren't you? I still can't tell you, though. I got maps. Please tell me where the rolling man lives. No, oh, can't do, miss. Uh, I can't divulge personal information about my customers. You're late again! And you know what else? You're fired! Give me back the delivery list and get your sorry blue skin elsewhere! Hired hell. Bah! Never hire a Domari to do a human job. How much are your maps? Uh, that depends, miss. I got a very nice one here of the Border Mountains for only six. Aaron's fresh from the quill of a Sunrider. Maps, get your maps here. Do you sell maps of the city? Can't help you there, miss. The Guild of Tourism has monopoly on city maps. I can tell you're not from around here, or you know that. Got tons of maps of all the Northlands, though, from the city of Tyron to the Bay of Fire. Maps! Where can I find the Guild of Tourism? They're closed for the holidays. Sure, that makes sense. What are you gonna do now, without a delivery boy? And hire a new one, of course. Ah, uh, blasted be the balance. That means I'll have to pay the damn fee to the Guild of Merchants. Damnation! Maybe I could help you out. You? How? I'm quick, honest, and reliable. And I've got a lot of experience in the service industry. Hmm, perhaps a female errand boy could work. If the Guild of Merchants don't find out, I won't tell them if you don't. Mind the pay is not much, only a single Aaron per delivery, plus whatever tip the customer may see fit to give you. I'll take the job, if you want me. Agreed. Maybe you'll even bring in some new business. Here's the delivery list for today and your first map. It's for the Captain of the White Dragon. Nebebe, I think his name is. You'll find him in the harbor. Oh, and remember to have the customer sign the delivery list. The guild are sticklers for protocol. No signature, no money, no new jobs. Bye now. Maps, fresh, detailed, life-saving maps.
there, matey. Pardon? Isn't that how you sailors greet each other? No. W what do you say, then? Usually, hello. And if it's sunny, nice day for it. We might even try a how are you today, then, if we're feeling adventurous. But never, ever, ahoy. This is valuable information. Aye, matey, that it be. Is this the white dragon? That's what the big white letters on the prow spell out. What do you think? I'm looking for the captain. Is he around? What would you with the captain of the white dragon? I have a delivery for him, a map from the map merchant at the temple market. Aye. I be Captain Horatio Nebeve of the White Dragon, fastest vessel there ever was. Hand the map over, girl. With Jarl's blessing, the wind will return soon, and I can leave this accursed harbor for sunnier shores. Thank you. There's an errand for your trouble. Sign this, please. What is it? I need your signature to confirm that you've received the map. Map? What map? The one I just gave you. Oh, that one. Sorry, I never put my signature on a piece of paper. Why not? Brings bad luck to give a piece of yourself in that manner. A signature has untold powers. It's part of your soul. I can't sign away my soul. Who told you that signing a slip of paper is bad for your soul? I'm from Guyenne, and we're a spiritual people. Our souls are in balance with our bodies, and the great Mojal has taught us not to endanger this balance. Signing my name, giving a piece of myself in that manner, breeds corruption and imbalance within. And it pisses the Mojal off no end. And that's why you choose to make my life difficult? Hey, blame organized religion. You can't write, can you? Pardon? That's what this is all about. You can't write. Uh, so what? So what if I can't write? So what if I was born at sea and never spent more than a month ashore ever since? I still won't sign your accursed paper by Jal. Look, all you have to do is sign an X next to your name on the list. You can't trick the great Mojal. The Mojal's untrickable. That's not trickery. It's legally binding. I said no. Is there anything I can do to get you to sign? No. Well, yes. But no. Look, Captain, I'm desperate here. I really, really need some kind of signature. Well, there's always music. What's music got to do with you signing my list? Nothing, but it distracts the Mojal. What are you talking about? Why would you need to distract the... the... Mojal? I can't sign when there's a chance the Mojal is watching. Music distracts the Mojal. Ergo, I can sign. But doesn't that mean the Mojal is always distracted? I mean, there's always music somewhere in the world. The Mojal has an eye and an ear for every acolyte, and straying from the path can bring great wrath upon us. Granted, I know very little of the Mojal, but seriously, maybe you should look into alternative religions? Blasphemy! Besides, I only have to visit the temple once every two years, and the membership fees are quite reasonable. So... If I play some music, you'll sign? Aye. I'll give you that much. I'll be back.
I don't doubt it for a second. This guy's selling musical instruments. Most of these, I don't even recognize. But he's got a drum in there, and what looks like half a guitar, and a couple of... dried rabbit carcasses. Ugh. What's your, um... most affordable instrument? That's cute. The flute, right? And how much for the flute? I'm guessing that's one Aaron. the flute. That's one errand, isn't it? As luck would have it, I actually know how to play a flute. Not very well, but I'm sure the, uh, Mojal won't mind. I'm ready to play some music if you're ready to sign. Aye, go on, but don't stop until I'm done signing, or the Mojal will surely wreak vengeance on us both. Done. Here you go. And don't ever ask me to sign anything ever again. I can pretty much guarantee you that. Simon is a map of Shangagrael to the Rolling Man. Hold on. Did you not ask me about him earlier today? Um, no. No, that wasn't me. That was somebody else. I could have sworn, well, no matter. Uh, do you know how to get to the Rolling Man's house? I forget. Uh, let me explain then. Now, pay attention because this is complicated. He has chosen to live in the most inaccessible place in the city, but I guess he has his reasons. 
first you head west off the marketplace on Oak until you get to a tiny little apothecary, Mrs. Cassop's Herbs and Oils, where you turn north on South Street, confusing that, for about four minutes of brisk walking. That's when you see a, a large grove of trees. It's a memorial to those who died in the last war with the tyrant back uh, the balance knows when. Can't see why they choose to remind us of that, where you'll turn left. That's west? No, left. That'll take you back south, but onto North Street instead. And that keeps you out of the Dalmari neighborhood. Down that way, nasty, nasty neighborhoods. Keep walking south or about, or was that north? Wait, wait, north on South Street, south on North Street, or the other way around. Anyway, find the Rose Bridge off uh, Irene Avenue and cross it. There's a river? No, just a bridge. The river disappeared 500 years ago. No one knows what happened to it. After you've crossed the bridge, you'll be on the western slopes of Marcuria. And that's where West House... I mean, the rolling man lives. No, far from it, but you need to pass through that part of Mercuria to get to the rolling man. Keep south and watch out for the livestock. They're likely to attack in that part of town. Eventually you'll get to a large circular square. That's where they used to hold executions back when the city was civilized. You call murder civilized? Better than locking people up for years, as any level-headed person would tell you. Our freedom cannot be curtailed. Real men choose the honor of death to the shame of incarceration. Yeah, sure you do. Circle around the square and head down Tandak for half a mile. Or should that be Parrick Lane? Yes, Parrick Lane. Head west on Parrick Lane for uh, half a mile. Then turn right at the Maiden's Honor Tavern. North again? Uh, no, west. Uh, Parrick Lane has a few twists and turns. Anyway, you should now be able to see the Ivory Tower. Is it a big tower? No, only about five feet tall, but it's ivory, straight from the coast of the Southlands, bravely cut from the drooling jaws of the gruesome Kandar. Big creature, four legs, large ears, long snout, sort of grayish in color? Yes, the horror of the Southlands. Many a brave hunter has fallen victim to its ravaging hunger. Good grief. Okay, then what? Pass by the tower to the edge of the cliff and look down. The rolling man has built his home on the cliffside. It's a wonder he's not been washed away by the storms. <laughs> I hope I got all that. Basically, go west until I hit the edge, right? Uh, yes, that would be correct. talk with the man. Hello, Mr. Westhouse? Damn, Mason, what is it now? Oh, well, <clears throat> guess you're not, uh, you're not calling on behalf of that son of a bitch Sanya for him. Sorry, I don't know who... No, no, that's very unlikely. From what I hear, he doesn't much enjoy the company of women. Well, who in damnation are you? April Ryan, sir. Ryan? <laughs> Doesn't sound very Northlandian. Are you by any chance from the coast of... Do you hold on. Ryan? April Ryan? <laughs> I'll be damned. You're from Stark. Apparently. Until today, I thought I was just from Earth. I had no idea there were two of them. <laughs> Takes you by surprise, doesn't it? Well... God damn, sit down, Miss Ryan, let me get you a drink.
The liquor over here stinks to high heaven. Magic pollutes the purity of the spirit, but I keep a bottle of Glen Fittage for special occasions. Thanks for the offer, sir, but I didn't come here to have a drink. Really? I see. This isn't a social call. No, sorry. Oh, no matter. It's still a pleasant surprise to meet someone from home. <laughs> now, <clears throat> what may I do for you? I have a delivery for you. A delivery? When did the U.S. Postal Service start delivering mail to Arcadia? <laughs> it's from the map merchant at the market. It's just a map. Oh, good. I've been waiting for you. Well, hold your horses. What are you doing working for the guild? Are you planning on staying in Mercuria? I'd strongly advise against it, Miss Ryan. Arcadia may look like a pastoral fairy tale realm, but it's not. You bleed as easily here as you do in Stark, and magic can do more damage than a gun. I'm not planning on staying, but I had to find you. The map merchant was the only one who knew where you lived, and he wouldn't tell me. So I got him to hire me, and you were the second delivery on my list. Dear gods. Carrick and his misguided loyalty. I'll have a word with the man. Thanks for the map, though. I collect them. There's not much else to do in this godforsaken city. Cortez told me to look you up. He did, did he? I see. <clears throat> Who's Cortez? You don't know him? I think not. I'd certainly remember. Did, did you say Cortez? You, you wouldn't be talking about old Manny Chavez, would you? Well, he ought to be dead by now, but then, by all rights, uh, <laughs> so should I. I don't know his first name, but he calls himself Cortez. Tall fellow, mysterious and elusive, rarely answers a question with a simple yes or no. Smokes like a chimney? Aside from that bit about smoking like a chimney, it sounds exactly like Cortez. Manny. I'll be damned. That old crook is still around. Well, how the devil is he? He's good. Where do you know him from? Oh, my old life back in Stark. We had some exciting adventures, him and I. Actually, he's part of the reason I ended up here. I last saw him in the winter of 1934. But that's almost 300 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? And I'm sure he doesn't look a day older than he did back then. The handsome devil. <laughs> well, if I'm going to accept magic in parallel worlds, I might as well accept people living 300 years. Oh, no, you misunderstand. <clears throat> I'm only 46. I arrived here about 15 years ago, but I, I left Stark in 1934. Between the worlds where you dream, time has little meaning. I was trapped, you see, for, for quite a while. For 300 years? Time went by pretty fast. It didn't seem so bad at the time, but now that you mention it, 300 years... Quite disconcerting, really. Quite disconcerting. Cortez said to look you up when I wanted to go back home. To Stark. Now, why would he say that? I'm not a shifter, and I, I don't know any magic. I'm sorry, Miss Ryan, but you'd be better off asking the Sentinel Priests for assistance. Already did. They said I was on my own. That they couldn't help me. Bloody typical, those reactionary fools wouldn't extend a hand to help a drowning man if it violated the principles of their bloody balance. But I can't think why Manny would tell you to visit me in order to shift home. It just doesn't make sense. How did you end up here in Mercuria? <laughs> That's quite a story. I won't bore you with the details, but suffice it to say... I was always somewhat of an adventurer. The promise of 
virgin territory untouched by civilization held great sway with me in my youth, as did the idea of a highly spiritual state of mind. The occult, magic, karma. I was born in 1902 in Boston. By the time I was 17, I'd put that life behind me. I spent the next three years at sea, and then I wandered around Europe for a time. In the early 30s, the 1930s of course, I found myself in India working as a journalist. That's where I met Manny, and that's where I first heard of Arcadia. I was amazed and quite skeptical at first, but the thought of a whole new world to see and magic? <laughs> I was a fool, of course, but who knew where my curiosity would bring me? So what happened in India? I've tried to forget about it, to be honest. If I could go back and convince myself not to... Oh, but I still wouldn't have listened, of course. The unknown attracts. I ended up in Tibet in the winter of 34, wading through snow up to my chest, thinking for sure that this was it, and I was going to die. Manny pulled me out of that one, thank God. I spent three months in a monastery before pushing on into the void. There's only one way for a non-shifter to pass through the divide, and it's not an easy road to take. Now, if you don't mind, <clears throat> I'd prefer not to talk about the past anymore. There's more than enough to worry about in the present. I should get going. Very well. You're welcome back at any time, Miss Ryan. Any time. Thank you, sir. I'll remember that. Hold on one second, Miss Ryan. I just remembered something. It's such a long time ago, I'd almost forgotten, but... Manny did give me something that might be of interest. What is it? It's a pocket watch. Manny gave it to me the last time I saw him. I never quite understood why, but maybe you can tell me. Did he say anything about it? He said that when his heart started beating again, he would know. It would be like a message in Morse code, a beacon. Damn watch never worked, and the winding mechanism is broken, so it's probably not worth much. You're welcome to it, if it's any help. Thanks. It's an antique pocket watch. It's not ticking. The knob used for winding the watch seems to have broken off, and there's only a tiny hole left. If I insert this pin carefully into the hole, like so, and then slowly wind it. It worked! It's ticking! I did it! It's a shift! I can go home! By God, it's a shift. I haven't seen one for ages. Why don't you come back with me, Mr. Westhouse? You could say hello to your old friend. Manny. If I tried to step through that, Miss Ryan, I would suffer a most unpleasant experience. And I would be lost in the between forever. Besides, I built this house with my own two hands. I wouldn't want to leave it to these barbarians. And what does your Stark have to offer me? This world is more recognizable to me. Now you go ahead, Miss Ryan. Go back. And don't let your curiosity of the unknown tempt you into making another shift. Thanks for your help. Say hello to Manny for me. Tell him... Tell him I'm doing all right. And then I said... Thanks. Yes. 
Oh, God, it's real. It's all true. I saw it. I saw the other world. Arcadia. Either I'm going crazy, or you were right about everything. Hey, let's hope for the latter, eh, mi amiga? So I gather your trip was a success. Success? My whole world has been turned topsy-turvy, so I don't think success is the right word. Nothing about it makes sense. The fact is, I don't believe in magic. The sun does not need you to believe in it to rise in the morning, senorita. You have seen the truth with your own two eyes. I can do nothing more to convince you. It is up to you now. Well? Do I have a choice? I have to believe at least some of it. My life wouldn't make much sense otherwise. You are a true skeptic, April. Está bien. We need your kind to balance the hopeless romantics like myself. What happens now? The Minstrom told you about the balance. About Stark and Arcadia. A man named Tobias? He was called the Vestrum, I think. Vestrum Tobias. Ah, so Tobias made Vestrum give Ying good. I knew he would go far when I first met him years ago. He was just an instrument then, a student of the balance, but he was smart and resourceful. So you know what is going on with the balance. Tobias told me that the... Guardian? That the Guardian was missing and that the balance was failing. He said this would bring chaos into both worlds. As we are already seeing, your dreams, your nightmares, they are part of this. You sense chaos more keenly than most. But even they are beginning to notice that things are not as they should be. Like last night. What about last night? What you saw. You were not alone this time. There were others. And they saw the same thing. Not nightmares anymore. Real. The first sign of the damage chaos can do. The divide is being breached. It is not yet time for the worlds to be united. A breach could prove catastrophic. Who are you really, Cortez? Excuse me? People knew you over there in Arcadia. Tobias. He didn't know you by your real name, but he did know you. And Mr. Westhouse, he knew you too, as Chavez. But several hundred years ago. So my secrets are being revealed, are they? I wouldn't say that, because you're still a mystery to me. Or so. Good. You see, senorita, mystery is important. To know everything, to know the whole truth is dull. There is no magic in that. Magic is not knowing. Magic is, is wondering about what and, and how and where. I'd settle for the truth, just to be able to know you. Because, uh, honestly, I don't mean this in a bad way. You scare me, Cortez. I'm afraid of you. And you are not the only one, mi amiga. I'm sorry, but whatever it is about me that mystifies you, it will have to stay a secret. There are... there are things even you should not know. Gee, thanks. That really helped. Perdona me. Perhaps later, when we are certain of what the future holds, okay? I think I can promise you that, Senorita Ryan. Later. But for now, we must speak of more important matters. You helped me back, didn't you? To shift? See? The power is yours, yes? But for now, you need me to focus your powers to call forth your dreams. Dreams? Yes. To travel from one world to the next, you must pass through the world of dreams. It is the only way. You are capable of opening a shift on your own, but you might not be able to. What do you mean? The power. The magic is within you. And when you sleep, sometimes you open the portal without even being aware of it. But when you're awake, it's more difficult. With practice, you will do it. I don't think I want to do it. 
You must. The worlds depend on it. So what do I do? We must work together, April. I can't do it alone, and neither can you. But what exactly is it that we have to do? Four things. We must find the Lost Guardian, we must locate the gateway to his realm, and the disk that is the key to his tower, and we must do what we can to curtail and defeat the Vanguard. How are we going to find the Guardian? The moment he surrendered his throne and left his realm, he stepped back into our world, this world, Stark. This is where he was born, and so this is where he must return to. But he could be anywhere, right? This city has power, April. Not magic, but the opposite of magic. And it draws people to it like flies to an open fire. All the pieces of the puzzle come together here. You, me, the Vanguard, the Guardian. I can guarantee you that he's here. But where exactly, I do not know. I think maybe the Vanguard do. I think they may have him. If they have him, how are we going to get him back? And why do they need him? Why do we need him? He left his realm, but he's the last guardian. And only he can open the doorway back to his realm to let his successor through. The Vanguard knows this. But what they don't know, yet, is how to get there. Who'd know about the gateway to the Guardian's realm? That, I do not know. That knowledge wouldn't be here in Stark. You must go to Arcadia, study the books, talk with the Minstrom and others who might know, but not yet. First, we must finish our mission here. How do we defeat the Vanguard? The Vanguard are strong here and growing stronger. Even in Arcadia, they are gaining a foothold. And with the tyrant on a leash, the future looks quite bleak. How do you know so much about what's going on in Arcadia? Voices whisper in my ear, senorita. Voices that I trust. You're saying the Vanguard are strong here. How come I haven't heard about them? They don't go by that name here. Did you ever hear of the Church of Voltec? Sure. They're... Oh, that's the vanguard? See. Then they're big, very big. But why do they... Why assume a different name here? In Arcadia, they flaunt their philosophy. They preach the destruction of the balance under the pretense of returning humankind to the glories of the past. Here, they cannot do that. So they have integrated themselves slowly but surely into society under the subterfuge of the New Age religion. And they've built a financial empire to match governments. They have that much money? The Vanguard own multinational companies. They own planets, April. They own armies. All they need is the balance, and they will own everything. The twin worlds will be at their mercy. So, we basically don't stand a chance, do we, against an enemy like that? If we hold at bay the forces of chaos, and if we ensure the natural continuation of the Guardian's role within the balance, then they will have lost. Where is the key to the Guardian's realm? In Arcadia. The key contains two parts. One is the disk itself, the other is the Four Jewels, the Eyes of the Dragons. That gives the disc the properties of the balance and makes it complete. Where is the disc? The disc was left in the care of the Sentinel 10,000 years ago. In the beginning, it was kept in the open, displayed for all to see. But not anymore. Not since Steve's tried to make away with it. They will know where it is. Ask Tobias, Vestrum Tobias. Where are the four jewels? Ah, the eyes of the dragons. They are kept by the four dragons themselves. Two in Arcadia, and two in Stark. 
The White Dragon has won, as does the Old One. These you must find yourself. I'll help you with the others. How are we supposed to fight this chaos you keep talking about? You're the key, April. You have the power to shift, yes? But there's more to you than that. You are a child of the balance. And you... No, that will have to wait. By just being alive, you counter chaos. Without you, last night might have turned out much worse. That tiny breach might have been permanent. I didn't do anything. And imagine the power you wield when you really do something. Trust me on this, Amiga. It's instinctive to you to fight chaos. You see it so clearly, and you will know what to do. You are most needed in Arcadia, where chaos is a part of reality. The tidal wave will hit there first, and unless it's subdued before it hits Stark full force, we'll never stand a chance. So you will have to travel to Arcadia after we are done here. Okay, so that's it? Kick some vanguard ass, find the Guardian, locate the entrance to his realm, and a 10,000-year-old disc and four dragon eye jewels? And oh, April, make sure you do battle with the physical manifestations of chaos along the way, because hey, that's your destiny. It's impossible, Cortez. I can't do these things. I'm 18, I'm an artist. No, not even that. I'm nobody. You can't place all these responsibilities on my shoulders. I can't carry that much. I will help you, April. Others, too. You're not alone. Well, I feel very alone, and I can't even tell anybody about this. Yeah, hi. How are you? I'm the Chosen One. Can you help me save the world from evil and chaos? There is no Chosen One, April. There are only those who would and those who wouldn't. You have a choice between the two. You said I had powers. That I wasn't like everybody else. True. But you still have a choice. Prophecies can never unravel the will of a single human. You are one of many possible paths. But unfortunately, most of the alternative paths have been blocked by... ...circumstances beyond our control. The world does depend on you. But you have not been chosen. You choose for yourself what you are and what you will be. What happens if I choose no, no way? I am not a fortune teller, nor am I a Venar. What will happen? Something else? That's all I can tell you. Something else. But I'm sure it won't be anything good. Not unless you agree to help. But I can't do it. I'm not who you think I am. I'm not your savior. I don't have any magic powers. I'm just this girl. I'm just... me. The choice is yours, April. As always, the choice is yours. It's not much of a choice, is it? For what it's worth? Perhaps not. Still, you need to come to the decision on your own. Then the choice will have to be, yes, let's save the world. Where do we start? Here, in Newport. We must find out about the Vanguard. Their headquarters are in this city, but where? Do they have the Guardian under lock and key? What are their weaknesses? Once we've done that, you must travel to Arcadia. I cannot go there, and besides, I have things to take care of here. Right. Except, where the hell do I go to find out about the Vanguard? The library? The net? Valuable information is hard to find. Remember the painting I showed you yesterday? Sure. The artist. A boy named Warren. I told you about him, yes? Warren is involved in a lot of activities that, um, aren't exactly legal. He has connections. He can point us in the right direction. All right, okay. Where do I find him? My friend, Father Raul at the Hope Street Cathedral, he's had some contact with the boy lately. Ask him. Wait, did you say Hope Street? Yes. As in the most dangerous neighborhood in Newport? Is it? 
I don't usually follow the civic affairs of the city. I remember Hope Street when they first built it. A clean neighborhood. That must have been a very long time ago. Still, I'm sure you'll be safe. You're a girl, no? A self-respecting gentleman would never harm a girl. It's the self-respecting gentleman part I'm concerned about. Still, I can handle myself. Father Raoul, was it? At the Hope Street Cathedral? Yes. He will lead you in the right direction. Help you find Warren Hughes. When you're done tomorrow, you will meet up at the Cathedral late in the afternoon. I need to speak with Raoul as well. Okay. Good. It's a plan, then? Enjoy yourself tonight, April. Who knows what the future may hold? Good night. long hours today, Charlie? Unfortunately, yeah. Are you staying for the show tonight? What show? You don't know who's playing? I've had a... few other things on my mind these past few days, Charlie. Sorry. Anybody good? Anybody good? Are you kidding? Roy and Dale's playing. It's the first gig on their new tour. Sort of returning to their roots before they do the big venues. Tonight? Great, that's perfect. Especially tonight. I need some serious unwinding. Yeah? What's up? I just had the weirdest experience of my life. Weirder than what happened here last night? Much weirder, trust me. I mean, what happened here could be explained. A hologram. Rapture gas. Mass suggestion. That's stretching it a little, don't you think? What? Rather than the alternatives? That we're all either going crazy or that something's breaking through from another world? You don't think that's stretching it? I don't know what I think, April. I just know that sometimes there are things lurking in the shadows that can't be explained by science. That the world holds more mysteries than we think. Maybe. So what's this thing you were going to tell me about the weirdest experience of your life? You wouldn't believe me anyway, Charlie. Try me. No, really, I can't. It's too much, too close. I don't know if I believe it myself. Okay. You tell me about it later then, all right? Maybe. Is Emma around? Haven't seen her. But she knows about the show, so she'll be here. When does the concert start? In less than an hour. I expect the place to be crowded soon, so you should find yourself a spot to sit down. Thanks, Charlie. No problem. Later. been all day. You didn't show up at school, you weren't at work, and then Fiona tells me you're out looking for Cortez again, and on top of that, Zack brags about bagging a date with you. What's up with that? Oh, shit. Zack, I totally forgot. He's gonna kill me. If I don't show up, that is. You mean it's true? You have a date with that asshole? I told him he was full of shit. I needed some information. And you sell yourself to get it? April, you're insane. Well, you're just going to have to disappoint him. 
I made a promise. To that sleaze bag? That's a promise made to be broken. A promise is a promise. I have to go. Commendable, but incredibly misguided. He's only after one thing, you know, and that's sex. <laughs> he can forget about that. I'll go, but I'm only staying an hour. I'll tell him I'm tired or sick. Knowing Zack, he'll take that as an invitation to your bed. But I guess you've made up your mind. Go, have a good time. Good luck, you'll need it. Oh, God. Headache. I didn't really have that much to drink, did I? No. But I did travel through a shift into a parallel universe, which would explain this weird compulsion to curl up into a fetal position and go back to sleep. Not that I'm particularly looking forward to it, but I guess I have to go find that Warren guy Cortez told me about down on Hope Street. And hey, like that's not enough. I have to avoid bumping into Zack today. Last night's, um, uh, date is not something any of us should be reminded of, and I'm not just talking about the incident with the groping and me kicking him in the groin. Doesn't he get that no means no? No. What the fuck was your glitch last night, bitch? I'm sorry? What did you call me? I take you to a top-class club, wine you and dine you, and you slap me in the fucking face. Did you ask yourself why I slapped you, Zack? I don't fucking care. You'll regret fucking with me, bitch. I can promise you that. I'd call you a bastard if I didn't think you'd take it as a compliment. If I wasn't such a fucking nice guy, I'd smash your fucking face in, bitch. You're gonna be so fucking sorry you ever fucked with me, April fucking Ryan. It's Constable Guybrush. I shouldn't leave him here. The eye came loose. Poor Constable Guybrush. Sorry, Guybrush. But I need to borrow your eye for a while.
Father Raoul. You're not a Hope Street regular, are you? I haven't seen you here before. I don't visit the neighborhood very often, no. And why should you? It's not a very nice place. This cathedral is all there's left of the hope in Hope Street. I'm sorry to hear that, Father. So am I. But we cope. We cope. How may I be of assistance? Do you know a boy named Warren Hughes? As a matter of fact, I do. The Hugheses were regulars before they traveled to the colonies. Poor Warren was left an orphan by his family. I haven't seen him for years. Where does Warren live? I'm not sure he lives anywhere. But he does belong to a Hope Street gang, the Razorblades, I believe. They seem to conjugate just down the street in Building 87. Be careful, though. Although they're far from the worst gang around here, they're not a particularly friendly lot, and they don't care for strangers. I can take care of myself. <laughs> I don't doubt that. Still, be careful. Do people still go to church? Yes, some do. Some do. Religion is pretty resilient. Religion, sure. But there's so many new religions, and people tend to abandon the old ones, don't they? They'll be back. The Voltex and the Manus of the world offer only a fleeting chance of material happiness. What they cannot offer is spiritual enlightenment. So you're not worried about the competition? We have over 2,000 years of experience and tradition to build on. I don't see us just rolling over on our backs and giving up. No. Where did you say I could find Warren Hughes? Your best bet would be Building 87, just down the street. Thank you, Father. Please come by again if you're ever in the neighborhood. Can I talk to you for a minute? You know where I can find a kid named Warren Hughes? Who's asking? Um, I am. Warren Hughes. Never heard of him. What's your name? What's yours? April Ryan. Lucky you. Alright, well, I guess you can't help me. Nope. Nobody can. What do you mean? A nice, pretty girl like you in a neighborhood like this, asking all the wrong questions. You're heading for some serious trouble, you know. I can take care of myself. Mm -hmm. Sure you can. The thing is, there are four guys waiting downstairs for you to come back out, and they can take care of themselves real good. Don't threaten me. I ain't threatening you, girl. I'm just telling you how it is. You're in deep shit, and you've only got yourself to blame. What do you want from me? I should have asked you the same question. Except I don't care. You should have thought twice before coming after me. After you? I didn't come... So you're Warren. What? Like you didn't know? No. Cortez told me your name, where to find you, but... Hold on. Cortez? Old Spanish talking dude. Real crazy in the head? That's a fair description, yeah. Shit. You're not a cop. Social services? Corporate? No, no, I'm a... a friend of Cortez. He said to look you up. I haven't seen Cortez in a while. Not since before. So what does Senior Cortez want with me? We need some help. What kind of help? Look, I gotta stay incognito most of the time now that corporates and cops are stepping up their search for us. I can't go risking my ass for nobody. Not even Cortez. That's all right. I just need some information on a group called the Vanguard and their leader, Jacob McAllen. Oh, sorry. Never heard of those guys. You wouldn't have. 
they keep to themselves. And they got some kind of cover operation going. But I don't know what it is, and... You want... need to find out? All right, here's the thing. I got a friend who might be able to help you out. Great! Hold on. Before I use up my favors with him, I need you to do me a favor in return. Probably even help yourself out at the same time. Fair enough. What do I have to do? Easy. Break into the Newport Police Department computer archives. Get me some information on my family. Destroy my criminal record and get the hell out of there. Preferably alive. I'll do it. You got guts, girl. That's cool. Besides, there's probably some information on the... Vanguards, was it? In the archives. And that information will be valuable to my friend if he's gonna help you. So here's the thing. My dad doped out on raps and seduced by commercials. Sold out our whole family to the shiny, happy colonization program for a lifetime supply of the big R. The Rapture. He neglected to ask his lovely wife and children, and the corpus didn't care. One day they came to pick up my mom, my sister, and me. I got away, though. Snuck out the window. I spent the next two weeks in a dumpster. And your family? And that's just it. I don't know. Off to the colonies, of course, but which one? I don't know. Sometimes they split up families, too. You know, they don't tell you that in their ads. I don't give a shit about my dad, and, and my mom, she's tough. She can take care of herself, but... I want my sister back. We were real tight. I'm not gonna let him use her in the mines and factories out there. So, you want me to find out where they took your sister? That's it. You're catching on. You do that for me, and delete my criminal record at the same time to get them damn corporates off my ass. I'll give you all the help you need. Where's the police station? Take the subway to Metro West. You'll come out on what they call Cop Street. You'll see the NPD headquarters down the block. You can't miss it. I'd better get going. Be cool, eh? It says Calavera Crossing MCW, and the street ID number is 0092. It's your garden variety robotic roadblock. You see them all over this pothole infested town. There's a small control panel on it. The display reads 3018. Perhaps if I try... Entering the idea of the intersecting street, the roadblock will move. I do to save the world. I mean that smell, that sticky stuff, the way that Ratchet wouldn't let go. Disgusting. Not to mention the fact that I really, truly stink. I don't think this is ever coming off. I'm gonna stink like fish heads and moldy pizza for the rest of my sorry life.
Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, what can I do for you? <coughs> Where are the archives? The archives? You're not an officer of the law, are you? So what if I'm not? Then you can't go into the back, capiche? Cops only. Besides, half the doors in this building, including that one, are out of order. Nobody's going in, nobody's coming out. <laughs> And until those overpaid, underworking service guys get off their butts and back to work, that's the way it's gonna stay. Thanks anyway. Hi. What do you want? We're on our lunch break, honey. Why are you guys working? We're on our contractually bound lunch break. Uh-huh. Right. But you're not eating. We're done eating, sure. But we're still on our break. Clause 16 of the contract, and I quote, improper digestion may prove detrimental to further work-related activities. End quote. Meaning what? We're letting the corned beef settle, honey. <coughs> Aren't you supposed to fix the doors? That's right. But instead, you're just... Sitting here. That's right. And you're not planning on getting back to work anytime soon? That's right. And you're not bothered by this? That's right. I could say anything, anything at all. That's right. And you just answer? That's right. Well, how's that for productivity? Yeah, yeah, that's right. It'd be so nice if you could fix the doors. <laughs> and it would be so nice if you could go away and leave us alone. Is there anything I can do to make you go back to work? No. Short of emergency, we ain't moving our asses in the foreseeable future. What constitutes an emergency? Any event accompanied by a specific work order signed in triplicate. <laughs> what kind of work order? Ah, uh, well, you know. About the work order... Yeah? Which one? You know, for emergencies. You mean the short-term tactical suspension of union members' benefits <laughs> requisition form? Uh, sure. Well, if you were to produce said requisition with the appropriate signatures, we'd be forced to prematurely suspend our lunch break, for tactical reasons, of course. Thus allowing our scheduled work to be completed. Don't you just love bureaucracy? You what? Never mind. <laughs> Where do I go to get the requisition form? What form? The requisition form for the short-term tactical suspension of... Uh... Of union member benefits. Any official office for which we perform services. Enjoy your lunch break, guys. With the Sunday overtime we're getting? You betcha, honey. Excuse me, ma'am. You again? What do you want now? I need the requisition form called Short-Term Tactical Suspension of Union Members' Benefits. All right, all right. What's the number? <laughs> number? I need to know the identification number of that form, you know, the five-digit alphanumerical ID. Aren't those documents arranged alphabetically? Yeah, yeah, they are, but I still need a number. Capiche? Thanks anyway. <coughs> it's a toolbox. There's a sheet of paper in here. Some kind of requisition form or work order. <coughs> Bokama Mercer Corporate Labor Union, form number 09042. Short term tactical suspension of union members' benefits. It's a carbon copy of an old work order. There it is, 09042. That's the number the desk sergeant wanted. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Excuse me, ma'am. <coughs> you again? What do you want now? I need a requisition form number 09042, short-term tactical suspension of union members' benefits. <coughs> <sighs> Hold on. <coughs> Here you go, miss. Union requisition form number 09042. I better forge... Ooh, uh, fill out this work order first. The damn doors! Sign the commission. There. <coughs> now we're set. What's this? Oh, just a jolly little requisition entitled Short-Term Tactical Suspension of Union Members' Benefits. Say what? Lady, do you realize what you've just done? <laughs> You've interrupted our lunch break. This is an official work order. It can't be. Wait. 09042. This isn't 09042-A, is it? Uh, no. Just plain old 09042-nothing. Ha-ha! <laughs> This being Sunday and all, that petition is useless. On public holidays, you need the extension dash A form. Addendum for public holidays. Us being on triple overtime and all. So? So, we're gonna stay here and enjoy our extended break. Thank you very much. Now go away. Excuse me, ma'am. You again? What do you want now? I'm sorry, but I need the 09042-A requisition form addendum as well. <coughs> the what? The 09042-A? Why the hell didn't you ask me for that one in the first place? Because I'm a cruel bitch and I love torturing you. In fact, I've made it my life's mission to haunt you forever and ever with requests for useless forms and documents. Hmm. Hold on. <coughs> All right, requisition form number 09042-A. <coughs> and that better be it. <coughs> Okay, now we're set. I hope. Why do you keep bothering us? Don't you have anything better to do? No, absolutely not. This is requisition form number 09042-A, the short-term tactical suspension of union members' benefits requisition form with the public holiday addendum. Balls! We've been nailed, George. Get your ass off the chair. We're going back to work, thanks to this lovely young lady. I haven't spoken with Mom since I... since I left, actually. I should give her a ring.
Hello. Hi, Mom. <gasps> it's April. How are you? Where are you, sweetheart? In the city, Mom. You know that. Why didn't you call? We've been... I've been worried sick about you, sweetheart. Didn't you get my letter? Yes, and I can't say I understand why. Well, that was the problem, wasn't it? You didn't understand. I don't think it was fair for you to be so hard on your father. You hurt him a lot, you know? And I'm not just talking about you pushing him down the stairs. And what about me? You don't think he hurt me? Were you so blind you didn't see that? April, you know I can't take sides in this. No. Of course not. Not you. Not ever. Anyway, how is... Is Dad doing okay? I mean, after the fall. He broke his arm, and he had to take some time off work. Money short because of that. We had to pull Danny out of school until next semester. You can't blame me for those things, Mom. If you hadn't left like you did... I'd probably be dead now, Mom. I couldn't take it anymore. Please, let's not argue about this now. I just wanted to... I just wanted to hear your voice. Please come home, April. We still love you. No. Thank you, but no. That's not gonna happen. Listen, I have to go. I'm in the middle of... something. Take care, okay? Okay, sweetheart. I love you. Yeah, me too, Mom. Bye. There's a phone call for you. For me? Who is it? I think it might be union business. Out of my way, lady! The panel is open and some wires are hanging out. I can't get to the wires while these guys are working them. I need to create some kind of distraction. Get them away from the panel. There's a call for you, too, sir. Me? I get no calls, ever. Except from my mommy. <laughs> Is it my mommy? Uh, it could very well be your mommy. Oh. Thanks. It's a long shot, but if I try to cross these wires... <laughs> Voila! I'm so good. It's a toolbox. Hey! You can't go back there! It's a restricted area! I need to dis- <laughs> Let's see... What's the most difficult form to get a hold of? The label on that shelf says, Reporting Indecent or Lewd Behavior by Bingo or BM Personnel, number 31366. <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. You again, what do you want now? I'd like that form for complaining about lewd and indecent behavior, please. Number? 31366. Hold on. <laughs> Let's see. Cola, lemon, lime, lemon, lime, strawberry, strawberry, lime, strawberry, cola, cherry, cola. Yuck. I'll go with the old standby. Bingo classic. Boring, but safe.
Sergeant Maria Hernandez. Hi. Who's in there? Manoe. Who's asking? God, I know that voice. What? Who are you? Sergeant Hernandez! Maria, thank God you're here. Listen, I need you to get my stomach medicine from the locker. Here's the key. Oh, oh God! Sergeant Frank Minnelli. Sergeant Minnelli's been banging his locker shut one too many times. Say hello to seven years of bad luck, guy. That sure makes me feel a whole lot better about harassing him. It's a loose shard of the mirror glass. I'll just carefully separate this shard from the mirror. Like so. I'll have to be careful carrying this around. It's a receptacle for a synthetic eye. I guess Frankie Boy's using one of those babies. You'd never tell from looking at him. Archives login. F. Minnelli. Password, wife's birthday. What a smart boy. Real security whiz. Hello? Maria? You got my medicine? Yep. Got it right here. Well, slide it under the door, will you? Hurry. Oh, thank God, thank God. Uh. How's Mrs. Minnelli doing? Why are you asking? I didn't think it... Oh, hell, Maria, we spoke about this. I told you I... Can't you just let it rest? Uh, sure, sorry. Just... wondering. I wish you wouldn't, Maria. You know how... It is what it is, you know? About Mrs. Minnelli. God damn it, Maria, I'm on the freaking can, yeah? I was just thinking, maybe I should get her a birthday present. What do you think? Are you nuts? Have you gone completely nuts? What are you doing? What the hell are you doing? Being nice? Nice! You want Laura to kick me out of my own apartment? Is that it? You want my wife to kick me out of the apartment tomorrow? Tomorrow? Your wife's birthday's tomorrow? You're not buying her a present, Maria. Don't even think about it. That would be such a big mistake, you don't want to make a mistake like that. Okay, boss. You're the boss. Don't call me boss. And would you leave me alone? I'm not in a sociable mood. Hell, I'm on the can! Gotta go, Manelli. Thanks for your help, Maria. Jesus, I think I'm allergic to the goddamn medicine. Oh, crap, my eye! There you are. Back in your slot.
Hi, I'm Frank Minnelli, and I feel really guilty doing this. I, uh, love my wife, Laura, and her birthday is on the 31st of this month, which means... Laura, 0731? Please, 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 please. Yes, I am so good again. Now, what to search for? I need to see any more of Warren's rap sheet. He's been kind of active. Whoa, I think I just killed Warren. Oh well, he's just gonna have to uh, live with that. At least the cops and corporates won't be after him anymore. Just the morgue. Warren's sister, and that's her colonization number. I'd better remember it in case I need it. It's a long shot, but... Presses are rolling. Now, where's the printer? The Church of Voltec is the front of the Vanguard use here in Stark, so there must be at least some information available. Jacob McAllen. White Cardinal? What the hell is that? I should keep that name in mind, though. It could turn out to be important. The so-called White Cardinal. I wonder who he is. I have no idea what that is. Warren's sister. Please, please let there be something. The only lead I have, so if this falls through, I'm out of luck. I'd better get a hard copy of this for Warren. It's a control panel with a weird keyboard.
There's no way I'm going back down into the basement. I'd rather be rolled out of here on a gurney with my body wrapped in black... This is Lucinda Carlisle reporting live from just outside the Metro Precinct police station, and I bring you today a senseless and tragic display of technology gone wrong. In the carnage you see behind me, medical drones are digging through the rubble of a crashed shuttle for the remains of over 100 people who lost their lives today in an accident. That could and should have been prevented. Only hours ago, a brave new World Airlines shuttle, carrying starry-eyed colonists to the Metro Tower, experienced an engine failure. And came roaring down on this street, without warning, crushing three cars and burying nine innocent pedestrians and two would-be carjackers. The cause of this human tragedy? As of yet, there is no official report. We can only speculate, and speculate we will. Was the pilot drunk? Was he hopped up on Amethyn? Was someone aboard carrying a bomb? Did the manufacturers of the shuttle, Monster Limited, skimp on a part and import it from a bootleg factory in Germany? The truth could be any or all of the above. But whoever is responsible, and whatever the punishment, it won't bring any of those bloodied, mangled corpses to life. It won't bring Teresa Roseman, mother of three, back to her husband, Marty. That loss is forever. And a huge cash settlement can only ease the pain. It can never remove it altogether. Only expensive brain surgery or personality modification through proprietary drugs can do that. The exact death count is still under wraps, and work will continue throughout the day to identify the thousands of body parts that are being picked one by one from the twisted wreckage of BNWA Shuttle 709. What repercussions will this accident have on our city? Probably none. You fly a shuttle, you take your chances. This is Lucinda Carlisle, reporting live for the Metro Channel Action News. Back to you, Lisa and Dan. Are we clear? How did I do? Uh-huh. And what are the ratings? Five million? That's it? Five million? Jesus, we've lost out to reruns of Gillian's Island? What the fuck, Gregory? Why the hell did you... Yeah, 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 don't give me any of that shit. You were the one who said this would broaden my audience. I, I, I should have stuck with the game shows. Jesus! How did it go? Did you get the information? Is my sister okay? It wasn't easy, but I did it. Your sister's fine. You don't have to worry about the law or the corporates anymore. That's great. That's... Thank you. Really. Thank you. So do you have the information for me? Sure, right here. Listen, Warren. Your parents... They're... They're dead. But your sister's okay. She's been adopted by some woman named Drake, a lieutenant with the Wakamba Mercer Corporation. My sister's a corp brood? And my... my parents. You know that should hurt, but it doesn't. I don't feel anything. My parents left me a long time ago. But my sister... I gotta find her. I'm sure you will, Warren. Hey, wait a minute. You killed me? Thanks a lot. Well, when you're dead, nobody cares. The cops are not going to be chasing after you for crimes committed by a dead guy. 
Yeah, you're right. I'm gonna have a tough time getting a new ID. You should've just wiped my record clean. I'm not complaining, though. I'm better off now than I was a few hours ago. So what can I do for you now, sister? Can you put me in touch with your friend now? Yeah, for the information you needed? Right. You got it. Head on out to the Newport docks, down in the outskirts of the city. It's all deserted now since they stopped using the boats for cargo shipments. Head across the construction yard to a large garage. You can't miss it. It's got all these large tubes outside. Knock three times on the door and tell Burns Flipper, and this guy's weird, so don't mind the stuff he says. Tell the Flipper that I sent you. I'll call ahead to let him know you're coming. He should be able to help you out with almost everything you need to know, okay? Thanks. Bye, Warren. Hey, keep it cool, sister. Trespassing, you gotta leave now. Where'd that come from? I'm April Ryan, Warren's friend. I don't know anybody named Ryan, so how about fucking off? Warren called you on my behalf, Warren Hughes. You know Warren, right? Didn't I tell you to fuck off? Yeah, but... So, fuck off already. Am I stuttering here? Jesus H. Christ, you'd think that fuck off would be clear enough as it is for even a slag like you to understand. I'm not a slag. Ah, so you're a gangbanger. Baby, there ain't enough here worth shit, you know? I got no beat with your posse, so fuck off. No, no, I'm... A corp? Yeah, I'd recognize a corp bitch anywhere. I'm legit, no funny stuff. Got my corp permit right here in my little hand two weeks ago. And I only do inventory by appointment, so you're gonna have to phone me up there, toots. Could you, like, shut up for just one second? Chill out! I'm April Ryan. I'm a friend of Warren's, who apparently is a friend of yours. And he called you a short while ago to let you know he's cashing in on a favor. Does any of this ring a bell? Ring a bell? Ding dong, the witch is dead. What are you, like a cliche movie chick? Yeah, it fucking rings a bell, but not the bell you'd like to hear. Think it was born yesterday? Like jacking in on a satellite conversation isn't the fucking guidebook to good corporate surveillance? Jesus! Corps always underestimate the blipper. Like I bite because I see a babe in tight pants. I don't think so. You know, if the fate of two worlds didn't depend on me, I'd tell you to go straight to hell. Did I mention blow me, baby? Did you blow me really hard? Oh, you're such a bastard! Listen, if I was out to arrest you, don't you think I'd have brought an army of corporate goons? You got a point. April Ryan, huh? Shit, my channel was warm and scrambled anyway. Top of the line African scrambler. Fucking impossible to hack unless you're the flipper. You're telling me that, that you knew who I was the whole time? Are you a psychopath or something? 
Or something. Sure, babe. Hey, hold on. Chill out, baby. Chill. Be there in a sec. How'd you get down here? Who the hell are you? I knocked. You let me in. We spoke only a few minutes ago. Warren's friend April? Warren who? I don't know any Warren. Oh, Warren. Right, yeah. Fire Lizard. Zeke. He's a good supplier. The Flipper likes him. Likes him good. You a buddy of his? Yeah. Oh, you his baby. Yeah. Oh, sure. I date 15-year-olds all the time. Whatever. So, what the fuck do you want? I need some information. So visit the fucking library. Or go bother the Oracle or whatever. The Flipper can't help you. That's too bad. I guess Warren was wrong about you. Yeah. Hey, what? What was he wrong about? About you being the best there is at getting information, any kind of information, I guess you can't help me. Fuck yeah, I'm the best. Best there ever was, better than Chocolat. I'm the king of data streams, the emperor of the feed, baby. What kind of information do you need? I need information on a guy called Jacob McAllen, and an organization called the Vanguard, or the Church of Voltec. Sounds pretty heavy. I gotta tell you, Voltex and shit, they got security, top of the fucking food chain. You got something concrete for me to go on here, huh? Besides names, names are nothing. <laughs> details! Gods and the Jesus is in the details, woman! There's a fucking ocean of info out there. Gotta know where to start, what to focus on, where do I begin? Give me a map! What is this place? This is the Flipper's Boutique, mademoiselle. I sell everything, from joy chips and porn cubes, strictly hardcore. Max, illegality. What would be the fucking point otherwise? The satellites and BH generators? What I don't have here, I can get, for a price. This place ain't your neighborhood S-Smart. Let me tell you, shop smart, shop S-Smart. Nah, what I got here costs moolah, mucho moolah. Are you in the market for a neutronium bomb, by the by? Got a hot one sitting in storage. Give it to you for a cool 100 million, huh? Bargain. Interested? Sure. Let me just check my wallet. No, of course not. Are you crazy? <laughs> I know you are, but what am I? <laughs> what happened to your legs? Jesus, are you fucking kidding me? My fucking legs, huh? You wanna know? I wouldn't have asked if I didn't wanna know. I'll tell you you took my legs. Captain Crunch! Now, answer this question for me. I'll tell you who took them. Sure. Are you a virgin? What? I ain't telling you nothing until you answer the question there, Trebek. I'm not a virgin. Good for you. Who'd you lose it to, Warren? What? No! Why the hell are you? I lost my legs when I was 18. I was doing odd jobs, breaking into high security accounts, spying, shit like that. I was hitting MTI at the time. Malkuth Technologies, big guys, big guns. So they caught me with my finger up the proverbial anus. You know what I'm saying? I was hooked up, cruising their network, when they hit me with some shit hits the fan tech. Fried my brain like breakfast sausages. Major brain malfunction. I was dead as a lesbian black chick at a Republican fundraiser. 
Woke up from the coma a week later. Some shit spewing goons from MTI are hovering over me. They tell me, try that again, dickhead, you die. Yeah, shit like that. Then I found out my legs are cut off. Sure, I can get some new ones, no problem. But that costs like an arm and a leg. Ha! Get it? An arm and a leg. Shit, I'm funny. So I start building me this hovercraft chair instead. It only works in here, but I don't care. Never leave the damn place anyway. That's the story. Not a virgin. You tell me something personal? I'll tell you something personal. And the world keeps turning round and round and round again because the flipper's on board. You're weird. So are you. Thanks for your help, Mr. Flipper. I'm the Flipper. The Flipper. Call me Burns, yeah. Beautiful. Ha! See ya! There's nothing in here. Oh, except for a tiny data cube. Hey, Burns? I'll be right up! I got this data cube from the police station. Yeah, so what the hell is on it? You asked for details? This thing has details. Plenty of it, I hope. And you expect me to sort through this shit for you, locate the relevant information, dive into the big blue sea of corporate security and fish out whatever it is you need from the feed? Could you? Please? Shit, you're cute. But if you weren't Warren's little play thing, I'd kick you out. And hey, whatever. Hand it over and I'll give me a few minutes. Holy macaroni, you do know what the fuck you're fucking with here, yeah? You do know, don't you? These guys are the fucking epitome of uncoolness. It's good stuff, though. Precious information. I gotta hand it to you, sexy. You know what you were doing bringing this to the flipster. So, what can you tell me about the Vanguard? Is there anything in there about where they're located and how to get access to their files? Shit! Aren't you a little too eager to trot with the beast, babe? Slow down, chill. I'll tell you what you need to know. But first, take a look at this recording. Just step over to the screen there, I'll play it back for you, okay? To join in the effort, we must charge forward into a new era of compassion, companionship, and goodwill. An era of expansion and enrichment. A golden era. We must forge a future for ourselves, our children, and our children's children that can withstand the forces that oppose us. We shall be victorious. What the Church of Voltec was created to do is bring spirituality back into our lives and into our world. Spirituality and knowledge. Our enemies have suppressed the truth for too long. We can no longer stand idly by while they spread their lies and their disinformation to the people of our planet. We must fight back. We must take to arms and defend ourselves against our oppressors. I am not by nature a man of violence, nor are you. I know that, but the time comes 
when all people must do their duty to protect their ideology and to preserve their beliefs, that time has come. Our time has come. We will do what we must to protect ourselves and our families. We will do what we must to defend our beliefs against the heretics. We will go to war if that's what it takes. Who was that? He was incredibly charismatic, but cold. What do you think? Your friend and mine, Mr. Jacob McGowan. Head honcho of the Church of Voltec, or the Vanguard if you wish. Supposed peaceful philosopher dude. Not the case, as it turns out. Obvious Hitler complex, real Nazi wannabe. This is heavy, dangerous shit you got here. And I love it. But I thought the Church of Voltic was a peaceful religion dedicated only to meditation and philosophy. You and 20 billion other souls, Missy. This is the truth, as clear as simple as butter. Now take a look at this, on the screen again. Who's this? Ah, it's a guy named Gordon Halloway. Evil-looking dude, huh? Turns out he's McAllen's right-hand man, runs the Vanguard's secret ops. There's a gold mine of info on this data cube. Yeah! The Vanguard have a bunch of agents that they've bred in tanks. Their grasp of genetic engineering far surpasses anything I've seen so far. Now, I've seen everything. From what I can tell, the Vanguard are up against an enemy they call the Fathers or the Sentinel. I don't know who the fuck they are, but I'll find out. Must be the good guys, though, if they're fighting these creeps. Anyhow, this guy Gordon, he was originally intended for some kind of religious duty, whatever the hell it was, for the Sentinel dudes. Let's say, like, Dalai Lama or whatever. But the Vanguard kidnapped him before he was ready, and they did some shit with him, some experiments to try to use his powers, and I'm thinking this spiritual crap. It's just bullshit. But... Both the Vanguard and these Sentinel dudes, they believe this kid has powers, that he's destined for something very important, so when the Vanguard grab him, that's like, holy shit, fucking big deal. What kind of experiments did they perform on the child? Weird fucking thing. He's trying to control these powers he has? They fuck up big time, though, and the kid is totally screwed up, split in half in some spiritual way, one part chaotic, the other pure logic. So now this dude Gordon, he's like the coldest motherfucker you'll ever meet, so stay out of his way. According to these documents, he'll kill somebody for cutting in line ahead of him, which I'll do too. You know, or like coughing in his own direction, which I'd fucking lop your head off for, but anyway. Now he runs the whole dark side of the Church of vault and I'm guessing he's next in line to take over. After old man McCallum leaves this earthly realm, which could take ages, I'm afraid, with the tech these guys got. How come the police were able to gather this much information on the Vanguard, and yet they don't do anything about it? I don't know, maybe it's routine. Maybe they want something on the bastards to pressure them when they really need to. And maybe the information just got lost in the system. The fact is, though, that with assholes like these walking among us, we're not safe. None of us. Least of all you. So please don't hang around longer than necessary. Yeah. So, okay, these guys are badasses, and I should stay as far away from them as possible. Disregarding that, however, where are the Vanguard headquarters? Now, you're either very brave or very stupid, Jaquita. But, whichever it is, I shouldn't tell you. Why? Because I'm a girl and I can't take care of myself? No, because anybody who fucks with these guys is sure to end up with a bullet lodged in the back of their skull. Or worse. I'll take that chance. Shit. You know, I'm the flipper. The flipper. I'm not into this shit, you know. I'm strictly into sales and profit. This detective shit you're doing. What the hell is it? Are you... Why are you doing it? That's a very long story. It's some other time, yeah? I really need that information, Mr. Flipper. Okay, chill, dick smack. I got it. I got it. You see, the church has several unofficial headquarters round and about, but they're insignificant. Cover operation, basically. There's no concrete address on this data cube you gave me. 
but I scanned it through some online records quickly, and I discovered that the vault the Vanguard, are linked to a very big company indeed. Which is? MTI, Malkuth Technologies Incorporated. Big guys, almost as big as Bokamba Mercer. Freaked the hell out of me, but it looks like the head honchos of the Vanguard may be running MTI. Which is kind of funny, because I got some beef with MTI, some heavy-duty beef. And now I got something to hit them back with, fuckers. What does that mean? That MTI is run by the Vanguard? It means that wherever the corporate headquarters of MTI are, you'll probably find the Vanguard elite. And do you know where the MTI corporate headquarters are located? I'm the flipper, dude! What the fuck do you think, shit? Don't answer that. Grendel Avenue. I don't know where that is. You don't know where Grendel Avenue is? Holy Christ! You're kidding, yeah? It's like the numero uno neighborhood in Newport. Only the top dogs live there. Apartments go for hundreds of millions of dollars. How do I get there? Sorry, babe. A slag like you are stuck on the ground level for all eternity. There's no stepping up in the world for you. you gotta have proper ID, top level ID, to get to Grendel Avenue. And you don't, babe. Sorry! Hey, Burns? I'll be right up! What is it? Could you fix me up with some fake identification? Why would you want that? How else am I going to get to Grendel Avenue? Hey, I'm warning you, don't fuck with those Vanguard shitheads. Yeah, they bite. And I bet you they don't let go like fucking... What do you call those little fucking dogs that don't let go? Pitbull Terriers? Shit! Man, those things are nasty, fucking wicked nasty! Can we discuss the fake identification I need? Baby, I gotta tell you, it's gonna cost you cash only. You got a lot of cash? Lots of it. You better come it out of your ears, baby. A sorry friend of a friend and all, but it ain't cheap! And I advise you to forget about it pronto! Let me worry about that. How much will it cost me? I have, like, $300. Ha! Ha ha! Try 20k on for size, shortcake! Sorry, little missy, but fake IDs cost a moolah. I need to buy a properly generated key from a connection downtown. I need an authorized blank card. You're an idiot. It don't come cheap, that stuff. Even if I cut out my profit, which for a friend of Warren's I just may. <laughs> It'll still come to fifteen thousand dollars, baby. Would you consider alternative forms of payment for a fake ID? Sorry, Chiquita, that urge disappeared with my little legs. No! Oh, not that! God forbid! More like a... a favor or something you need. Don't think I need a... Whoa! God! Shit, gets me every time. What's up with your chair? Ah, the anti-grav control unit is fried like fried taters, brainiac. Ah, it'll be gone, gone, gone for a good in a few days. But I hope my good friend, my buddy, my mate, Freaky Sales, gets me a new one before that, so it don't fall down. If I get you a new anti-grav control unit, would that get me a fake ID? <laughs> If you found a good one that actually works, and one that can lift more than 200 kilos, hey, sure, like you're gonna find one. <laughs> what would I need to get you to pay for a fake ID? A new working AG control unit for my chair would be real nice, wicked nice. Thanks. S sure. MTI Industrial Strength Paint Shaker. So it's a device for shaking paint then? That's so last century.
I think that's quite enough. This is volatile stuff. I'd better get rid of it as soon as possible. Nothing to see here. Except for that crashed hovercraft. Nah. You see those everywhere these days. Sorry? Dime a dozen. Crashed hovercraft are a dime a dozen? Fifteen a week, ma'am. At the very least. In this city alone. But they say it's the safest mode of transportation available. Statistically, yes. Unless you're aboard one of the buggers. Then your chance of survival drops drastically. What? They're the safest mode of transportation, if you stay on the ground. The chances of being hit by one going down are relatively low. Thanks for ruining my trust in modern technology. We're here to protect and serve. Isn't it the other way around? Just keep it moving, ma'am. Nothing to see here. Except for you, officer. Hey, me? I always did love a man in a uniform. Sorry, ma'am, but I'm gay. Now, move along. Nothing to see here. <laughs> Except for the escaped convict right behind you. I'm on special duty today, ma'am. So that escaped convict will have to take care of himself. After all, who guard this perimeter in my absence? Uh, me? I'll be good. That was a rhetorical question, ma'am. You are not qualified. Now, move on. Nothing to see here. Except... I won't tell you again, so move along. There is absolutely nothing to see here. Nothing. Jeez, don't you people have anything better to do? <coughs> are you feeling all right, officer? Thank you, ma'am. I'm fine. All the dust from the debris is just choking me up. <coughs> Would you like a cold soda, officer, to wash away the dust? Much obliged, ma'am. Damn, damn it! I have to get to the service office before my suit short circuits. I feel so bad. And I love it. It's a high-voltage laser perimeter fence. The color indicates that they're using military-grade lasers. I saw this on an episode of MacGyver 2200. If I'm not completely mistaken, and if I remember my tech classes correctly, that's an anti-gravity control unit that looks fully intact. The AG control unit is fastened tight with a couple of big screws. Yanking it free might damage the unit.
Burns? I'll be right up! Is this what you need? Whoa! Heavy duty! That baby's worth just enough for me to get you top of the line all access ID, babe. Yeah! Hey, with this, I might even be able to zoom on out of here once in a while. Excellent. So how soon can you have the ID ready? Uh, a couple of days. Couple of days? I need it now. Oh, no, 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 no. Ain't gonna happen. Shit takes time, you know? Shit takes time. Tomorrow night at the earliest. Can't promise anything, though, but I'll certainly try for the little girl. Staring up support for their ideas, and Arcadians, those easily misled sheep, they embrace these ideas because they prophesize change, and change is always attractive to humans. Not only humans, the Vanguard are using a tyrant to force their changes into effect. They say the tyrant have turned to religion, that they have... Ah, the tyrant! Those beasts are not much for loyalty, but promise them money and power. The Vanguard are probably ready to offer them half of the Northlands, perhaps even Mercuria itself for their services. And they have certainly wanted to put their filthy claws on that city for as long as I can remember. Yes, it's beginning to look quite bleak. What about the girl? I think she may have seen the light, finally. She does not know even half of what is going on, and if she did, I do not think she would be able to handle it. Better she does not know. Aren't you worried that the fate of the balance in our worlds is in the hands of a... a child? A simple country girl? Of course. I do my best to help her, as does the mother in her way. Still, April will be on her own soon enough, and then... who knows? After all, she is the one. No one seems to doubt that. The balance knows, and the balance provides, and if the balance believes in this girl, we should as well. Spoken as a man of true faith. But of course, Father. You're not the only one who places his faith in higher powers. Speaking of higher powers, I have to go prepare my sermon for tonight. And what lessons will be taught today? You know the usual. Sacrifice, devotion, faith. The cornerstones of any religion. Even the vanguard seem to follow these tenets. They require devotion through faith just as much as we do. Good night, Raúl. Que Dios te bendiga. It's beautiful in here, don't you think? So quiet, so spiritual. Sí. I'm no Catholic, but I still like coming here to meditate. To pray, if you want. If you're not a Catholic, who do you pray to? To the universe. To the balance. To the rock in this floor and, and the air around us. To you and, and to myself. What is that, Buddhism? It's life, senorita. Pure and simple. 
So, what did you dig up today? Oh, nothing, except for everything you ever wanted to know about the Vanguard and Jacob McAllen. You got the information? You found Warren? He helped you? Eventually. It wasn't easy. But I know where to find McAllen, and I'm working on how to get there. I should be all set by tomorrow. Good news. And just in time, too. Things are not going well out there. What do you mean? The balance is collapsing. And magic is seeping through into this world. Stark is still protected by its strong currents of logic and order, but Arcadia is on the brink of war and utter chaos. Unless we act quickly, Arcadia will fall into disorder, and Stark will follow. Can't we get help? Everyone with the power and will to help is doing so. But you are so much more important than anyone else. You can travel to Arcadia to bring order to chaos. At least until we find the Guardian and return him to his realm. What about the Vanguard? We investigate your lead tomorrow, yes? If we find what we are looking for, if they have the Guardian or know where he is, then we are one step closer to victory. But we still need to find the entrance to his realm. And the situation in Arcadia is not getting any better, not without your help. I don't know anything. What can I do? By just being there, you are helping. You are strong in the balance, April. And your power flows into those you meet and helps them against the tides of chaos. Whatever you do, however you do it, you are helping. I still feel so... so helpless. I don't understand half of what you tell me, and as for the other half, I can't help being skeptical. Good. Do not trust everyone or everything and make a stand against that which you do not believe. Just be sure to accept the truth when you find it, and embrace the good in the world. I'll do my best. What are we going to do now? Tomorrow, we will visit with McAllen, find what he knows and use it. Then the day after, you will go back to Arcadia. At most, we have a week. But it should be enough. As for today, relax, be with your friends. I don't think I'll ever be able to relax again. We pay a heavy price for our knowledge, yes. But try to enjoy yourself, because the hard work begins in the morning. I will see you then, yes? Wait, wait! Where are you going to be this time? We will meet here, yes? I'm afraid I cannot go back to Venice. Not now. There are... people looking for me. The Vanguard? Yes. They know what I am, who I am. They will not rest until they have me. So we must work very fast to destroy them. Tomorrow, then? Tomorrow. Have a good night, okay? Be careful. Thank you, senorita. And you. What are you doing? Charlie? Emma? What are you guys doing here? We locked ourselves in to wait for you. I hope you don't mind. No, of course not. 
By the way, I think Zack was spying on you guys. I caught him leaning up against the door, and he hurried back into his room the second I arrived. He's such a loser. And he seems to have a personal vendetta against you now after what you did to him. Or what he claims you did last night. Gotta love the guy. So what's up? What's the occasion? We want to know what's going on with you, April. What do you mean? Nothing's going on. Don't lie to your best friends. That's way below you. We know something's going on. There's no point denying it. For three days straight, you've been away all day. You've been acting weird and hanging around Cortez, of all people. And then today we find out you've been up to Metro Circle by yourself? I mean, April, for God's sake, what is going on? If I told you, you wouldn't believe me. Try us. We're your friends. Whatever it is, I'm sure we can help. Somehow. I've been... uh... chosen to save the world. <laughs> Stop kidding around, April. We're serious. So am I. I told you, you wouldn't believe me. You're actually telling us the truth. What do you mean, you've been chosen to save the world? As in, there's something really bad going down. I can't say exactly what, but Cortez is with the good guys, and I've been... drafted. Look, April, if you're having some kind of nervous breakdown, we'll do anything to... God, I knew I should have kept my mouth shut. Forget it! I don't even believe in myself, so why should you? I believe you, April. I've seen things these past few days, strange, inexplicable things. And my grandma taught us that there's more to this world than meets the eye. And after all, it's you saying these things. My friend, April. I've never known you to lie or even exaggerate the truth. If you believe it, I believe it. And I'm sure the same goes for Emma. Thank you, Charlie. It means a lot to me. I wish I could tell you everything, but I don't think I can. I understand. When you're ready, but if there's anything, anything at all we can do to help, well, don't hesitate to ask. There are a few things you could help me with. Great. What? Like I said, I can't really tell you very much about what's going on. Not yet, anyway. Tomorrow, after I've had a good night's sleep, I'll try explaining as much as possible. But there's one thing you can do for me. I have reason to suspect that somebody's out to get me, or Cortez. Who? Long story, but I could need some backup. These goons, these agents, they could be closing in, and whatever advance warning you're able to give me... We'll do our best. What do they look like? I'm not sure, but you'll know when you see them, I'm sure. Anybody suspicious around, let me know. This is kind of exciting, but you gotta tell me, what are they after you for? Did you do something illegal? Not yet. Not really. It's what I might do that they're worried about. But please don't ask me any more questions today. Just keep your eyes and ears peeled for anything weird. I need a good night's sleep, and tomorrow I should be able to tell you more. But thanks for helping me out, guys. I really appreciate it. We're all hanging out at the cafe tomorrow night, April, so you're just gonna have to join us. I promise. Now get some sleep. Sorry to tell you this, but you look totally exhausted. I'm glad we had this talk. Thanks for checking up on me, guys. Sure. Good night. Good night, Charlie. Good night, girl. Sweet dreams.
Where's that light coming from? This is a dream, I really do, because if Cortez didn't open a shift, who did? And how will I get home again on my own? No dream, and I'm guessing this is Mercurial. It smells like it, like a mix between fresh flowers and cow dung. There's some kind of part going on in there. Excuse me. Hello? Hi, hello, do you work here? Do I work here? Child, I'm the owner. I own and operate the Journeyman Inn. Oh, I didn't know. Of course you did not, child, but be careful. Others may not be as quick to forgive as I am when you address them disrespectfully. Is there a party going on? Is there a... Oh, child... Do you not know? It is the Feast of the Balance. Have you never taken part in the celebration? Unfortunately, no. I'm... not a party person. For as long as I can recall, the feast has lasted three whole days and nights. And everyone celebrated openly. Now, this year, there is great concern about the Vanguard and their supporters. So this year, the Feast of the Balance is celebrated inside, behind closed doors, and for one night only. But there's still much food and drink, <laughs> and you are welcome to join if you so please. I don't think so. I don't know anybody here. You're not with the Vanguard, are you? No, I'm from... Somewhere else. Far away. So it would seem. Well, if you feel up to it, child, you're welcome to join in the celebration. Thanks. Why do you celebrate the Feast of the Balance? You are a stranger to our customs, indeed. The Balance? You do know about the Balance, do you not? Sure. The balance between magic and science. I know about the balance. The balance of all, child. Everything is in balance. And the Guardian watches over the balance and us. We celebrate the Feast of the Balance to give our thanks to the balance and to the Guardian. If our devotion to the balance falters, if we lose our faith in the Guardian, then we are inviting chaos to destroy us. This is what the Vanguard is doing. Inviting chaos. They are dangerous. What's the Vanguard doing to destroy the balance? They are not doing anything to destroy the balance. But they destroy people's faith in the balance. They speak to the people, telling them how the Sentinel, the Fathers, are holding our world back that if we were to use the balance to our advantage, we could return to the old ways, the ways of the ancient Earth, before the Divide. Vanguard promised the people power, and wealth, and happiness, but they intend only destruction and death. What's your name? Benrima Salmon. I am the owner and proprietor of this inn. I bought it with money earned through honest trade in the Southlands. Tobacco, wine, slaves... That is where I'm from. The Southlands. I'm April. April Ryan. Well met, April Ryan. Have you come to meet someone, a handsome young suitor, perchance? No such luck, I'm afraid. I'm here more by accident than anything else. 
Ah, <laughs> no accident, April. Fate. Fate delivered you here tonight. You are strong in fate, are you not? What do you mean by strong in fate? You shape your own fate, and not the other way around. You are what the dark people call a wave. How can you tell? I am not only an innkeeper, child. I am a seer, taught by my mother, who was taught by her mother before her. And so it goes back to the dawn of our world. To the dawn of magic. What's a seer? A seer who is someone who can tell something about people, about events, about the past and the present and the future, just by looking at you. When I look at you, I see. I see. What? What do you see? Most people are drawn along by events, by fate, like a carriage after a horse. But some people know how to steer the horse, to change paths at will. You are such a person, but there is more. Tell me more about my future. It is strange. I see many paths, but they are all dark. I cannot tell much except that you are strong in fate and strong in the balance. And you are strong in magic, too. Magic? That can't be right. I'm not... I don't know anything about magic. You do not have to know about magic to be strong with magic. If you ever learn how to harvest your talents, you will be a strong artisan. Artisan? Where have you been schooled, child? Have you forgotten your lore? My lore? Yeah, well, I haven't really had much use for my... lore lately. The artisan is the most powerful of magic users. She is able to shape magic and to use it by force of will alone. An artist can use magic shaped by others, molded into new magic, new art. A magician, or sorcerer, witch, warlock, can read and write incantations, drawing spells from the power of words. And the alchemist can create magic potions. He is the least of the four. Anyone with proper education can be an alchemist. The other three require some form of talent for magic. Thank you. I am at your service any time, child. I am afraid I must go take care of my guests now. Enjoy yourself. Thank you, April Ryan. What? There is no time here. But there soon will be time for you and I. Time enough to be sure. You are speaking to me, April Ryan. We have spoken. I don't understand what you're... And how do you know my name? Who are you? Have we not met yet? I was sorry then for confusing you. I will be Abnaxus of the Venar, ambassador to the Irene Council in Mercuria for a time. I think I would have remembered you if we'd met. Who told you my name? You did. You are saying your name to me, April Ryan. In this moment, you tell me your name. You question why I know your name, and you speak to me the blessings of the balance for my long journey home. Sorry, I really don't know what you're talking about. It is difficult for us too, April Ryan, to understand you. We, the Venar, are not perceiving time like your people. In this moment we are everywhere. In this moment we are nowhere. 
But there is a veil. Beyond this veil we are not seeing, but you have. You will be seeing. You are seeing. What veil? The veil created in chaos, by chaos, with chaos. It is a dark presence in our future, yes, future. A dark veil which hides the things that have been and will be. What's all this got to do with me? It was late. You were tired. We have talked in the morning when you come to visit me. Now you understand everything. Thank you, April Ryan. The blessings of the balance to you, too. Did you just invite me to your home? I will. I did. I invite you to my home, April Ryan. My home was in the Mercuria City Green, and you will find it. In the morning, before chaos came. I am explaining everything, and you understood. It seems I've already accepted your invitation, so I guess I don't have a choice. That is what you said. Good night. You will sleep well. That looks like a really, really comfortable chair. I really am getting tired. I should find somewhere comfortable to sit down, rest my legs for a few minutes. Wake up, child. <sighs> Sorry, I guess I fell asleep. What time is it? It is morning. We need to clean before we open for breakfast, so I had to wake you. I slept right through the party? It seems so. You did not stir even when everyone was leaving. Oh, well. I feel pretty good considering. You look a little pale, but it's nothing a good porridge won't fix. Not to sound rude, but I've had my fill of her for the moment. Assorted bottles and spices and herbs. They look empty, and after last night's shindig, that's no wonder. Do you intend to walk about in that outfit, child? It is day, it would not be proper. It's all I have. Come. We will find something more suited to a young lady about the city. How do I look? Well, it'll have to do for now. You do not have the most womanly of forms, but I'm certain you will fill out in time with the right diet. Thanks. Thank you for the clothes, for everything. 
You will have time aplenty to thank me while you are cleaning plates and cutlery, child. I'm sorry. Work? Those clothes do not come free, child, nor does a night spent sleeping before the fire. I'm not asking much, only for a helping hand in cleaning. All right. Tell me where to start. You can start carrying in the mugs from the back room. You did good work for me today, child. More than was required. Here you are. Some coin to help you out. And keep the clothes. You seem to have grown into them already. It's a flower bed. There's plenty of room for more seeds to be planted in there. Not very good at this, but hey, I was born on a farm. That's gotta count for something. be a natural-born gardener. Strangest thing, I thought I heard a voice say something about a book of secrets. That the book of secrets is now open. Something like that. Huh. Enter, honored guest. And I would have been with you presently. Welcome, stranger, to my abode. Stranger? Don't you remember me? You invited me here. Every moment we meet, and every moment we part, you are both stranger and friend, April Ryan. I'm sorry, but could you try to be a little less obtuse this time? I have a hard time understanding half of what you say. I will beg for your forgiveness, April Ryan. I had a hard time to make myself understood amongst other peoples. I will pull myself into this moment, difficult as it may be, so that we can communicate and so that you may understand. It is important that you understand, April Ryan, very important. Who are you? I am Abnaxus of the Venar, ambassador to the I Reed Council in Marcuria. My people live far from here, and they do rarely visit your kind, and so I am their sole link to humans and Domari. Why is that? I alone among the Venar am able to focus on a particular moment and thread in time and so to speak with those who flow with time, like you. 
How do your people perceive time? It is hard to explain. Any moment before this moment and any moment after is the same to me as this one. I have lived already and I am yet to live. Do you understand me? I think so, but how's that possible? Everything is possible, April Ryan. There is magic and there is science, and between the two, everything is possible. Can you see the future? To me, every moment is the same. There is no future. I can relate moments you have yet to see, and I can unravel possible threads. But remember, the future I see may not be the one into which you walk. Moments and threads fluctuate, change. I can remember things that have never come to pass, and I have seen things that will never be. So you can't tell the future? I would see your possible futures, the likely threads among hundreds. If there was not a veil in time, I would. What's this veil you keep talking about? Somewhere ahead, in our path, there is a dark veil through which I cannot pass. Past which I cannot see. It is disconcerting to me to be blocked from the moments of my life. How did this veil come to be? It was, no, will be created in chaos, by chaos. To keep the future hidden, all threads converge on a single point here, beyond the veil, and this will happen only once it is written. Written? Where? In the prophecies. Tell me about the prophecies. Words have been written by seers who can discern from all possible threads the threads that are certain to be woven. These words are the prophecies. And what do the prophecies say? Prophecies speak of a time when the balance will falter, weakened by the assault of chaos and its servants. The moment the veil falls is the moment of uncertainty. The balance may stand, the balance may fall. I cannot tell which it will be, and I cannot even see the possibilities, the threads extending from each fork. But the prophecies also speak of a savior, as the prophecies usually do, one who will bring order to chaos, only to release chaos on the innocent, one who will restore the balance, only to finally break it. That doesn't sound like a savior. The word in my tongue is Kanang La. Literally translated, it means the small seed who grew to a tall tree. Can I ask you a few questions? Yes. Could you tell me a little bit about yourself, Obnaxus? Me? About myself? We, the Venar, are not good at speaking of ourselves. We always know who we are, and so we have no need to tell each other. Well, are you married? Do you have kids? Or perhaps your people don't marry? Yes, we do marry, and we always know who we are to be with, because our future is also our past. And so we also know our children, even though, according to your reckoning, they have yet to be born. My wife was, is, will be, the beautiful Abyanda. She lives by the Bay of Fire in the east. She gave birth to our three female children, Abratha, Abalexa, Abpalmana. How long has it been since you last saw them? 
I see them now, April Ryan. Do not forget I perceive time in a different manner from your kind. I have given them your regards. Well, uh, say hi to them for me. Why did you come here to Mercuria? I was chosen to be ambassador to Irene when I showed a talent for seeing the flow of time from one point to the next. I was trained for a long time in locking myself into a single moment to communicate and understand your world. My people do not normally involve themselves with others, but the veil has forced us to do so. Why don't the Venar want to involve themselves with humans? In the wrong hands, our knowledge is dangerous. To know of the possible fluctuating futures, this can be a weapon to some who flow with time. We cannot interfere with your time. We are not allowed. Who says? The balance. The guardian. The guardian watches not only the balance between worlds, but also the balance within. Time is in balance. And if this balance is upset, the guardian would know. I thought the guardian was gone. So he is. And that makes it even more crucial to my people that we preserve the balance and not upset it. Chaos is our enemy, April Ryan, and we do our part to keep it at bay, as do you. Are you planning on ever going back to your people? When we pass through the veil to the other side and time yet again opens up, I will return to my people. I look forward to that day. I miss my people, and it is hard to speak with your kind. It makes me tired. I know what you mean. I'm a stranger here, too. You will bring us through the veil, April Ryan, and then we can both leave this place and go home. Where is your home, Abnaxus? Across the border mountains and north, to where the forests are evergreen, and where in winter the land turns white. Do you know Father Tobias? Tobias is a faithful servant of the balance, and he is a good man. He leads the sentinel down a narrow path, but he never wavers. We are friends. So, I can trust him? Trust is a concept which often puzzles me. Amongst my people there is never distrust. We always know the truth. But amongst your people, amongst those who flow with time, trust is important, a fragile thing. But yes, yes, I do think Tobias is to be trusted fully. I cannot see beyond the veil, but up to that point there is no thread in which he betrays your trust, April Ryan. Have you heard of a man named Cortez? No, I have not. But that does not mean I do not know him. Names are often fleeting, April Ryan. He's my... well... Some have called him my mentor, others a nutcase. I'm not sure which it is, but I'm leaning towards the former. Your mentor? He is a shifter as well? No, I don't think so. He doesn't travel. Shift between Stark and Arcadia. I do not see him in my life, April Ryan. I do not know him. Beyond the veil, perhaps, but not before. Thanks, Abnaxus. You are always welcome, April Ryan. I need some help in my quest. Yes, you did. I did? And what did you answer? That I will help you as much as I can, but in the end... I'm on my own. I've heard that one before. What do you know about dragons? 
I do not know much about the kin, but I do know a little. Perhaps it will help you, perhaps not. The Dryak kin came to this world a very, very long time ago, before the dawn of man, before the divide. The Venar had yet to learn to be outside time, and there were few other peoples on earth. The kin played an important part in the divide, in separating magic from science, and in the founding of the fathers, the sentinel, to watch over the balance. It is said that after the divide of the four dry kin that came to earth, two went to Stark, and two to Arcadia. But that was a long time ago, twelve thousand of your years. I do not know what has become of them since. You don't know where I may find these dry kin? No, the white of the dry kin, the mother, has, according to legend, been cited. The tale of the silver spear of Gorimon speaks of the mother and her child. Though I think this is but a tale, and far from the truth. The story is called The Silver Spear of Gorimon? Yes. Unfortunately, I do not have this book myself, and I do not know of anyone who does. What about the other dragon, the other dryak kin? Of the dryak kin, I only know of the mother, the white of the kin, although... I have heard tell of a god who fell from the sky into the ocean a great long time ago, but this may also be just a tale. What else do you know about this god who fell from the sky? Only what I have told you. Someone with greater knowledge of the ocean and the creatures that live beneath its surface may be able to tell you more. Have you heard of a disc that works as a key to the Guardian's realm? Yes, but very little. It has been spoken of in the I Read Council only recently, brought to attention by the Tyran Ambassador. He wished to know where it is kept. And what was the answer? No one at the council knows or admitted to knowing, and the ambassador was asked to speak with the sentinel, which he is unlikely to concede to. The tyrant are allied with the vanguard, and so are in political and ideological opposition with the sentinel. I know Vestrum Tobias. He would not speak a word with the tyrant, nor the vanguard. Not unless it was to challenge their philosophies. So you don't know where I can find the disc? No. Ask Vestrum Tobias. Do you know anything about a rift leading to the Guardian's realm? I have heard speak of such a thing. I believe it was where the tower was built and the divide created. When the earth was one, it might still be open. Any idea where it is? I am afraid the Venar were never very involved in the affairs of the Sentinel, nor took any part in the divide except to agree to the necessity of it. We had little choice but to concede. We are a magical people. We need the balance because we would not, could not, survive without magic. How would I go about fighting chaos? You cannot fight chaos. It is not so simple. To oppose chaos, one must return order to that which has been affected by chaos, and thus reduce its powers. But this is not something everyone can do. Only those ordained by the balance can embark on such a dangerous task and survive. 
That's about it for now. I am glad I could be of assistance, April Ryan. Thanks for your hospitality, Obnaxus. Goodbye. Blessings of the balance to you, April Ryan. And may your journey have been a long and fruitful one. Good morning, Tobias. Why, it's April, my friend from Stark. Have you come to visit us again? So it appears. I didn't exactly come here by choice this time, though. Oh? How so, if I may ask? In a weird and twisted way, it's nothing out of what's become the substitute for ordinary in my life. One second I was in my room in Newport, the next... I was in a dark alley in Mercuria. You must have opened a shift while you were sleeping. Good. This means you are learning to harness your magic. Yeah, I guess, except I don't think I'll be able to get back home again. And this time, my mentor, Cortez, has no idea that I'm here. Ah, but I'm sure you will find a way to channel and control your power soon. In the meantime, is there anything I can do to help? I need to locate the disk that unlocks the Guardian's tower. The disk that is the key? Yes, it is needed. It might even restore balance, provided the new Guardian accompanies it to the tower, of course. But you wish to find the disk yourself? I have to. Cliché or not, it's our only hope. You uh, do this often, then? You know, save worlds? It's an expression. Heroism in my world is more of a cliché than anything else. I do not understand. But then I am merely a servant of the balance, while you are... more. But yes, the disk. As I told you once before, when the Earth was divided, and the realm of the Guardian created, a disk was forged in the Well of Making. The disk was to serve two purposes as a key to the Tower of Balance should it become necessary to enter it in the Guardian's absence, and as a replacement for the disk that is already in the Tower should it be broken. The Tower is now abandoned and locked, and the old disk shattered. I do think the time is right for the second disk to be brought forward and used. Where is the disk now? At first, more than 12,000 years ago, it was kept in the open, at the Sentinel Enclave outside Mercuria. However, when thieves attempted to make away with a disk, it was taken away. Why? So that the four parts of the disk could be divided amongst four of the magical people of Arcadia, people who would have nothing to gain from the balance being compromised. What people were the disk divided amongst? This I cannot tell you. I am not sure anyone remembers now. But it would be in the scriptures, I am certain. What scriptures? The scriptures of the balance. There are thirteen of them. Thirteen is a strong number, rich in tradition and... Did you know the Irene High Council consists of thirteen ministers? No, of course you don't. Thirteen was also the number of the fathers who begat the Sentinel, and who built the Tower of Balance. Where can I find the scriptures of the Balance? 
pay a visit to the Sentinel Enclave, located outside the city to the east. The great library of the Enclave contains every book ever written by an Arcadian Minstrum, and most others as well. Speak with Minstrum Yerin, the keeper of books. Tell him I sent you. I need to find the entrance to the Guardian's realm. There is one. You are right in that, but where I would not venture to guess. In the past, when the time came for the Guardian to step down and another to take his or her place, the Guardian opened a gateway wherever it was needed. A Guardian, still in full control of the balance, can invite anyone in and let anyone out. But with the Guardian gone, the only way in would be the point where the Divide was first created, where the tower was built. Isn't that location written down somewhere? Remember that this was done on the old Earth before the Divide. After the Divide, after the creation of Stark and Arcadia, places were shifted about. This entrance may not even be on the ground anymore. What do you mean? It could be up there, in the sky, or far below us, through the crust of the earth into the molten depths below. I cannot say, and I do not know anyone who could. Isn't there any way to locate the entrance to the Guardian's realm? Perhaps with careful investigation of the old texts, histories of Arcadia, of the Divide, the scriptures. I do not know, April, but it cannot hurt to look. Again, you will find these texts at the Sentinel Enclave. Speak with Minstrom Yerin. I need to locate the two dragons that reside in Arcadia. The Drykin? What's the difference? Dragons is a word from your world. The kin are not what they have become in your legends and fairy tales. But they're real, aren't they? Oh, as real as you and me, April. And old. They have been here since before our time. As you probably remember, the kin were instrumental in the Divide, saving mankind from a terrible end. But I know so little. Only what I can remember from my studies when I was a minstrel at the Enclave. How can I get more information on the Dratkin? Books, daughter, books. The wisdom of the ages. There is one tome you should study, called The Secrets of the Drykin, by Minstrom Elniak. It is old but informative, and it captures the imagination. Where can I find this book? Again, you will find these texts at the Sentinel Enclave. Speak with Minstrom Yerin. I need help getting back home. Unfortunately, I'm in no better state today to help you shift than I was the day before yesterday. You are the one with the talent, and so you must learn to use that talent. Thank you, Tobias. Good to know I could help you, April. Hi there, Mr. Westhouse. I'm back. My word. <laughs> what on earth possessed you to return to this godforsaken place? You were lucky to escape the first time, but now you're really pushing it. It's not that bad a place, or else you wouldn't stay here. Besides, this time I didn't exactly come here by choice. I stay here because I'm a true masochist, Miss Ryan. 
And who forced you to come? Was it Cortez? He doesn't even know I'm here, unfortunately. No, I think I had some kind of accident with my so-called powers. I shifted in my underwear. No, huh? <laughs> Isn't that the way it is, though? We always cross the rift at the most inopportune times. <laughs> Care for a drink? Oh, no, no, that's right. You, uh, don't. <laughs> Would you mind helping me with a few questions? I have nothing better to do, so shoot. Do you know anything about dragons? I try to stay out of the affairs of the kin these days. What precisely do you wish to know about the damn beasts? There are two dragons in Arcadia, and I'm trying to locate them. Yeah, I've heard that tale myself. But no, no, I don't know anything about it. You'd be better off speaking with the Sentinel Minstrum. After all, religion is their specialty, not mine. Did you ever hear a story about a god who fell from the sky? Stories aren't my thing, April. You should visit a library. I'm sure you'll find some stories in the books. I know the Sentinel have a library somewhere near the city. I've also heard rumor of a people with wings who do nothing but observe and record history through stories. But I don't know if that's all it is. A rumor. Still, if you're looking for stories, it may be wise to check it out and see if you can find them. I'm looking for a disc that will open up the Guardian's realm. That's religion, Miss Ryan. <clears throat> and the only things I worship are whiskey, a good cigar, and a nice long... <clears throat> Anyway, don't ask me about all that, uh, balance mumbo-jumbo. Would you be able to tell me where I could look for the entrance to the Guardian's realm? In Tobias's pants? <laughs> if he had his wish, I'm sure. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know anything about the Guardians. Balance, or Sentinel, or gardening. <laughs> Now, if you're interested in bullfighting, I could talk all night. Bullfighting's a horrible act of cruelty to animals, and not much of a sport at all. I'll just forget you said that, Miss Ryan. If there's one thing I miss about Stark, it's bullfighting. You'll be happy to hear, then, that they abolished bullfighting hundreds of years ago. Damn. What did you say about the flying people? They're supposed to be great storytellers, and they've been observing this world for a very long time. But it can only be a rumor. I can't think of any more questions for now. Then let's talk about other things, shall we? Thanks, Mr. Westhouse. Anytime, April. Come back if you're homesick and you feel like talking to a fellow alien. seen volume six of the complete annotated history of the Northlands, have you? I, I could have sworn it was here yesterday. Sorry, no. I guess someone else must have taken it. <clears throat> I try to tell them to write down what they borrow on the list, but they never listen. Only last week I spent three hours searching the entire enclave for the second scripture of the ballots, the scripture of song, before I realized that Vestrum Tobias was studying it back in the city. Now, 
Such incidents could be avoided if only... And uh, this applies to you too, young lady. People would sign out the books they borrow when they borrow them and sign them back in when they're done. Such a simple procedure. It shouldn't take more than a few seconds to jot down your name and the name of the book you borrow. It makes my job so much easier. Uh, now, which book did you want me to find for you? Are you Minstrom Yaren? Yes, of course. Oh, what a silly question. How would I know? I don't know you. I am Minstrom Yaren, keeper of the great library of Mercuria. In fact, this is the greatest library of all the Northlands. Perhaps of the entire world. Although they say the Dark People have a library as big, if not bigger, than this one. But of course, we're not allowed anywhere near there. Have you been there? I don't think... What a silly question. Of course you haven't. You're not of the Dark People, are you? You don't look like any Dark People I've ever seen, so I can't see how you could possibly... Now, where did Volume 6 disappear to, hmm? Tobias said I should talk with you. Tobias? Uh, Vestrum Tobias? I haven't seen him for... Well, he was in last week, but before that it must have been... Uh, days, at least. How is he? Is still eating enough for two mules? I must tell you of this funny story I heard the other day, of how Vestrum Tobias eats enough for a table full of Minstrum. Uh, or was it one Elguan? Although the Elguan don't, as a rule, eat very much at all. Did you know that the Elguan can smell water more than half a day's journey away? Amazing, amazing creatures, perfectly suited for a life in the desert. The balance provides, uh, that's for certain. The balance provides. Vestrum Tobias recommended that I look at some books. Uh, books is what we do best here at the Enclave, that is for certain. Which book would you like to see? I'm looking for some information, but I'm not sure which book to ask for. No matter. I know a great deal about most of the books in here. What topic intrigues you? Are there any books about flying people who observe and tell stories? Winged storytellers, hmm? Uh, let me see what I can find. Hold on. I did find something of interest. I'll leave it here for you to read. The island of Elias, near the Briston Atoll. Maybe I should try to go there. Are you done? Uh, let me take that back for you. Oh! Oh, goodness, it's you again. Oh, you gave me such a fright. Could I see some more books? Oh, certainly. What a silly question. I'm looking for some information, but I'm not sure which book to ask for. No matter. 
I know a great deal about most of the books in here. What topic intrigues you? I need to find out which four magical people of Arcadia were given a piece of the stone disc that serves as the key to the Guardian's realm. The stone disc of the balance, yes? Yes, yes. There, there could possibly be something on that in... Uh, um, uh, let me check. Just one moment. I did find something of interest. I'll leave it here for you to read. Are you done? Let me take that back for you. Oh! Oh, goodness, it's you again. Oh, you gave me such a fright. Could I see some more books? Oh, certainly. What a silly question. I'm looking for some information, but I'm not sure which book to ask for. No matter. I know a great deal about most of the books in here. What topic intrigues you? I'd like to learn more about dragons, about the dragon kin. Oh, yes, yes. We have some wonderful books on that topic. Stay here. I did find something of interest. I'll leave it here for you to read.
Are you done? Uh, let me take that back for you. It's you again. You gave me such a fright. Could I see some more books? Oh, certainly. What a silly question. I'm looking for a story called The Silver Spear of Goriman. Yes, a fanciful tale if I ever saw one, but a charming one. Did you know that I'm often paid visit by adventurers wishing to read everything available on the sphere, so that they too can set out on their foolish quests? Yeah, don't you just hate those adventurers? Well, they pay for my bread, milk and butter with their contributions to the coffers, so I shouldn't be too critical of them. Uh, but they care not about the books, they care only about what the books can give them. I care. About the books, really. I can tell. So, the Silver Spear of Gurimon, then? I did find something of interest. I'll leave it here for you to read. Are you done? Uh, let me take that back for you. Oh! Oh, goodness, it's you again. Oh, you gave me such a fright. 
Could I see some more books? Oh, certainly. What a silly question. A book on the history of Mercuria would be interesting. Ah, an extensive subject, to be sure. I will do my best. I did find something of interest. I'll leave it here for you to read. Are you done? Let me take that back for you. Oh! Oh, goodness, it's you again. Oh, you gave me such a fright. Could I see some more books? Oh, certainly. What a silly question. I'd like to read some Arcadian folk tales. A favored topic of mine. I have just what you're looking for. Thank you. 
I did find something of interest. I'll leave it here for you to read. Are you done? Uh, let me take that back for you. Nice day for it. Not really, no. Why aren't you out at sea? Do you see the sail on that barge over there? Yes. Is it flapping? What? 
Is it flapping? Is the sail flapping in the wind? Um, no. And why is that then? Because, because it's not windy? Exactly. Well, can't you just use oars or something? Oh, what an excellent idea. Now, why didn't we think of that? Of course, oars by Jaws' stunted left arm, that's it. Why have we been moored to the dock for a month with our merchandise dropping in value when we could have just rowed our way to Guillen? Are you being sarcastic? Sarcastic? Me? What in Jaws' name makes you think that? How long's it been since the last wind? Near a month. Ever since that accursed alchemist put some kind of spell on the wind. The Mojal be cursed if I know why. But it's a bloody catastrophe. I've sent some good people of mine up north to deal with him. But not one has returned. Now the A-Reed High Council speak of sending an entire army platoon to sort him out. But I'm afraid that just might piss him off. Do you know anything about a god that fell from the sky into the sea? Of course. You find fallen gods most everywhere these days. They're an air and a hand. Really? No, of course not. There are no fallen gods in the sea. It wouldn't make much sense, would it? If the sea was full of gods just lying about the seabed. So you've never heard of such a thing happening? Now you got it. Do you know the island of Elias? The vacation paradise of the ancient Del Mari? Certainly. How do I get there? It's near the Briston Atoll. But boats rarely travel directly to Briston from Marcuria. You'd have to travel via Guyen. Who's this alchemist who cast a spell on the wind? I believe his name is Clax. Roper Clax. Lives in a bloody rock somewhere up north, beyond Riverwood. Can you give me a lift to Guyen on your ship? There are three problems with that scenario. Number one, there's no wind, so we can't set sail south. Number two, I lost my navigator a few weeks past, and I have yet to find his replacement. And number three, you're a woman. We don't let women on board the White Dragon. Isn't that a bit sexist? Sexy is just what I worry about. What with a boat full of men being out at sea for months at a time? Not sexy. Sexist. I'm a sailor, girl. What do you expect? Good bedside manners? I'd really appreciate it if I could hitch a ride with you to Guyen. Ain't gonna happen. Sorry. Thanks for the chat. Hi. Hello, old man. I got me no treasure, and I got me no map of no buried treasure. I just be an old sailor with no ship, so leave us be. What are you doing? Mending nets, of course. What'd it look like I'd be doing? I'm not well versed in maritime customs. Not what? Ah, yes, mean sea life, dear nut. Ah, the smell of the salty sea, the lapping of waves on your ship, the spray of cold water on your face, plump maidens in every part. I, I tell yous, I be having stories about the sea. 
What have you got in that chest? What chest? The one you're sitting on. Oh, that be no chest, girl. That be me stool. I me stool, carved into the uncanny likeness of a chest. But what's in it? No priceless treasure, that be for sure. Nothing, nothing at all. It be empty. No, really. What's in the chest? Oh, live snakes. Ay, snakes that'll bite your face off before you have time to jump. Better leave them be, then. I'm still curious about that chest. Right, right. I be telling you, curse the balance, girl. You never give up, do you? I be having no real treasure in here, like I told ye. But it be where I keep me personal articles, and things I be picking up now and then on me travels. And me bed, it's where I be keeping me bed before I be losing him. I be a stupid, stupid old man. He be my best friend. I ain't nobody else around to talk to, you see, on account of him being a talking bird. What happened to your talking bird? I be... it cheated out of him. I, that cups handler on the marketplace, be cheating me in a full game of cups, and I be having to give me bird up to try to win me money back. And what happened? He be taking me bird when I be choosing the wrong cup. I, my best friend, taken from me. Cast to be the balance. I be all lonesome now. The worst part is that me bird is now a prize to be won. A prize in the cups game. Beat the handler thrice and you win a prize of your choice, me poor bird. What's your bird's name? Bird. Oh. Do you know how I can get passage on a boat going south? Aye, coin be the way, as me beloved wife always be saying. Course she'd be running off with a wealthy merchant while I'd be away at sea. Women, never trusted one I didn't pay for again. I don't have much coin at all. And I'd be at a loss, as do ye, unless... I need coin to travel in a boat unless... what? Unless I be calling in a favor with the good Captain Horatio Nebeve, who be traveling to Gayen as soon as the wind be picking up. What kind of favor? Oh, he be owing me from back when I was his captain. Would you cash in your favor with Nebeve if I got your bird, bird back? I I be promising anything to get me friend back. It be a deal. Do you know the island of Elias? I I be knowing lots and lots about the feared Isle of Elias. It's feared how? Because because it be a place of cannibals. You really don't know anything about the island of Elias, do you? Uh, no, I do not. I'd better get going. Ah, you young'uns who be always running round. Everything be so important. He's be having no time to sit down and take a breath. So go. Be not wasting your time here with me.
Hey, you! What's going on? Why didn't you deliver any maps yesterday? I wasn't around. Sorry. Well, there are more maps to be delivered, and my customers are getting very impatient. Did you deliver the map to the rolling man? Yes, sir. All right, let me see his signature, and I'll give you your next delivery. Weren't you supposed to make a delivery to the rolling man? Yes, yes I was. Then what in the deepest, darkest recesses of Mount Tierney are you doing here? Get to it and remember to get his signature! this please it's just to confirm that I made the delivery certainly staying at the Journeyman Inn. And be quick about it. She's been waiting since the day before yesterday. Want to test your skill and perception with a game of cups? There are prizes to be won! Okay, let's go. Just place your bet, <clears throat> investment, on the table and the game will begin. Here's my coin. Now, how do I play? I place one cup on top of your coin, like so. Then, I shuffle them, like so. You guess which cup hides your coin. If you get it right, you win another coin. Three in a row, and you win a prize. Hey, that cup moved. I have absolutely no idea. So I'll just take a wild guess and choose this one. Uh, that's... that's correct, but... that's... You used magic, didn't you? You used your magic wand! Nah, your amulet didn't light up, did it? No, but... but... it's impossible! Because you use magic yourself? Because nobody's supposed to ever win your game? They have a name for people like you, sir. Con artist. What? I'm outraged! I'm... I'm... outraged! Whatever! I want my prize! Prize? You don't get a prize for winning once! Especially when you're cheating! You cheat! You want me to call the city guard? I demand a prize! Oh, by the gods of gambling! Here, take this and leave me be! Calculator? Why did you get this? Oh, I don't know. Wanted off some guy who got it from someone else who's supposedly been in stock. It's a worth... I mean, it's a valuable souvenir from the mysterious and elusive world of logic. Now, would you please let me be... Let someone else play. Yes? I'll make a trade with you. My screwed... My magic wand for one of your prizes, and then I'll leave your game alone. 
What's the catch? No catch. You get a screw... Magic wand, and I get one of your... exotic prizes. Hmm. All right. Fair enough. Which prize would you like? The talking bird. <laughs> that scraggly heap of... A fantastic choice, young lady! Hold on a second, and I'll get him for you. A fantastic choice, and I really, really mean that. Yeah, yeah. Wait a second. Did the old man send you to get me? I guess he did. My name's April. Oh, God. Is there no escape? I mean, not that I like being cooped up in a cage for gamblers to gawk at and children to spit at all day, but give me a break. It's better than being locked away in a stinking chest. Thanks a whole bunch for rescuing me, April. You're welcome. No, 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 hey, hey, that's not what I meant. I was being sarcastic. Do you know what sarcastic means? Speak all tongue? Yes, yes, hmm? No, actually, I don't. I speak English. English? English? I don't know where you're from, lady, but you're weird. Okay, so let me go already, all right? Enough with the I'm human so I can boss the bird around shtick. We're all impressed. Sorry, I promised the old man I'd win you back. I need a favor from him badly. Yeah? So what's so important you'd sacrifice a bird's happiness and well-being? The fate of two worlds, billions of people, and the balance. Yeah? Yeah? So... No, forget it. So were you always just bird? Or did you have a better name? No. It's always been bird. My full name is That Damn Bird. I learned that when I was two weeks old. That damn bird, the old man would say. No good ball of feathers. Then he beat me with a stick. Really? Uh, no. He'd just stick me in the chest and forget about me. Which is almost as bad as beating, believe you me. I'm sorry to hear that, bird. You know, if you were my bird, I'd call you Crow. Yeah, well, I'm my own bird, lady, and I don't... Crow. You'd call me Crow? That's a pretty good name. It's a proper name, at least, not just an insult. Anyway, I guess I'd better get you back to your master bird. He's pining for you. All he's pining for is coin to gamble with. It's really none of my business. Sorry. <laughs> sure you are. Here's your bird, bird, sir. It wasn't easy, but I got him back. I sure hope you're grateful. Bird, blessed be the balance, me faithful friend and companion be back. No, 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 not back in the chest, not in the chest! How can you help me get passage on a ship? Aye, I, I be a man of me word. Speak ye with Captain Horatio Nebeve of the White Dragon, the ship behind yous. Tell him Umbrianos be sending yous to cash in on that old favor he be owing me. Thanks, old man. I.
How are you today, then? Like you care. You know old Umberianos, don't you? The old drunk? Aye, he'd be a good captain once. But ever since he lost his ship, he hasn't been much worth to anyone. Be that as it may, you do owe him a favor, right? Aye, that I do. He saved my life more than once. And I wouldn't be captain of this beautiful lady if it weren't for him. Guess what? I'm here to cash in on that favor. I'll be damned. What did you do for the old geezer? Promise him your hand in marriage? Don't you mind that, old boy. Just get ready to sail south. You're giving me a lift to the island of Elias. I mean, since you're already heading for Gien. I am? That could prove a little tricky. How come? For one, there is no wind. That accursed alchemist up north has put some kind of spell on the wind. Clax, I believe his name is. Roper Clax. Lives in a bloody rock somewhere beyond Riverwood. As long as he's got his dirty claws on the wind, this vessel ain't going nowhere. Then there's a little problem with my crew. I can't very well leave the harbor without a navigator, and my last one decided he didn't much care for the sea anymore and went off to marry a serving maid. But, okay, let's say I manage to free the wind and find you a new navigator. Then will you drop me off on Elias? <laughs> You think you will be able to defeat Clax, free the wind, and find me a new navigator? By Jal's pus filled left eye, if you do such a trick, then I. I'll take you wherever you wish to go. Most likely they'll be holding your funeral within the week, girl. <laughs> Just leave the madman be and let the army deal with him. Never you mind. As long as you keep your promise and take me to Elias. What's with Elias, anyhow? It's been deserted for hundreds of years, ever since the Dulmari fell victim to the Great Plague. I need to visit the Elation people, to listen to some of their stories. As if there aren't enough stories here. <laughs> it takes all sorts, that be for sure. Do you always travel like you got a two-headed Vesperian nymphate on your tail? I couldn't keep up half the time. Crow, is that you? Of course, there was that pair of stunning Robin Redbreasts. Twins, did you know? Not as if I could just leave them without a kiss or two. Or twelve, as it turned out. <sighs> Maybe I'm just out of shape after being stuck in boxes and cages and knapsacks for the past 20 years. I guess it is you. Of course it's me! How many birds do you know with both good looks and a sense of humor? You got a sense of humor? Oh, funny. <laughs> That's funny. 
What are you doing here, Crow? What am I doing here? What am I doing here? How about a nice to see you, Crow? Or I've missed you so much, Crow. Or at least a glad to see you out of that chest, Crow. It is nice to see you, Crow. How did you escape? Cunning, milady. Of course, that keg of Andrick and stone liquor the old geezer got his hands on didn't hurt. I've never seen such a shameful display of public drunkenness in my life. Well, not since the last time I had a thimble full of wine. Phew, boy, were those ladies in for a surprise. When they were told I could talk, I'm sure they didn't count on my encyclopedic knowledge of Dolmari obscenities. The old man was gonna gamble me away again, you know. Went straight back to the cup's handler after the, um, celebration. So, I decided to split before they put me back in the cage. That place was like a prison without the amenities. And let's not even mention the food. Did you ever try roasted El Guan Dung? Ugh, pooey, duh, don't, ever. So, I pecked a button here and some soft tissue there and fled. I had nowhere else to fly, so I decided to join you on your, uh, quest. It sounded like a spot of good old-fashioned fun. Like a bird zone adventure. It's not as if I came after you because I like you, though. You don't have any feathers. Thank God for that. Okay, if you want to join me, I wouldn't mind some company. I'm guessing you'll be using your wings, though, and not your feet? The ground's no place for a free spirit like myself, baby. Besides, I hear there are a lot of good-looking birds in this forest. And let me tell you, they don't parade about on the ground like winged chickens. Just try to slow down once in a while. Let me catch up. Sure. But how do I get your attention if I need to talk to you? Can you whistle? Like this? <laughs> Sorry. But wait a second. I got a little flute. I could use it to call you. I'm not a sheepdog. Let's get that straight. You play your tune, and I'll consider your request. I won't be flapping to attention like a tame soldier hawk. Deal. We better get moving, though. It's getting late. Aye, aye, Captain. I'll try to keep an eye out ahead in case there's... trouble. Oh dear, oh dear me. Please, human, don't kill me and skin me. I haven't even sung to the soil yet. Don't worry, I'm not going to kill you or skin you. Oh my, that is good news. Very good indeed. Who are you? My name's April. What's yours? In my language, it's Bandu Umana Banta Au Rubana Bitana Benort. It means the little one who tries hard to live up to his father who sings to the soil. That's a mouthful. So, um, what do I call you? You can call me Ben Bandu, the sad little one. Banda is the name of my people. We are the little ones. Why are you sad, Ben Bandu? I'm looking for my brother. He's been gone in the forest for many days, and I've not heard him sing to us. Our people don't walk about the forest much. It's too dangerous for us. You haven't seen my brother, have you? He's short, about my height, with a tan coat and a mischievous glint in his eye. You're the first mole. The first Banda I've met. Oh dear. I hope he's all right. A lot of our people have disappeared this summer. What happened to the Banda that disappeared? We don't really know. But there's something evil in this forest. Something that doesn't like the Banda. I shouldn't be out here looking, but... I must find my brother. 
If I see him, I'll let him know you're looking for him. Oh, thank you. Thank you ever so much. Aren't your people called the Mole People? That's what the city dwellers and farmers call us. They say it with sharp tongue. Moles. Dirt diggers. They don't like us very much. Our given name is Banda. The Little Ones. Or the Banda Banta. The Little Ones who sing to the soil. How do you sing to the soil? When we're old enough, and we found our voices, we just sing. And the earth shapes itself to our needs. We live in harmony with the earth, just like the birds do with the air. Good luck on your search, Ben Bandu. Sad little one. And the best of luck to you, April. Please, if you see my brother, tell him to come home. We're all so very worried. Hey, Crow, would you mind doing me a favor? I was having this tete-a-tete -tete with a pretty young sparrow, but hey, Crow at your service. Did you say favor? Huh, sure thing, unless it's something extremely... Uh, no, no, make that even remotely dangerous. I don't like dangerous. Not at all. Just scout out the forest from your vantage point. See if you can find Ben Bandu's brother. Ben who? The mole I just met. I thought you were supposed to be watching me. Didn't you pay attention? No. Uh, mole, you said. They're savages, a lot of them. You eat birds, even. Crow, I eat birds. You probably do, too. Hmm, yeah, I love a roasted duckling in a tangy orange... Oh, uh, yeah, 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 I see your point. Looking for a lost mole, then, are we? Yeah, and they're called the Banda. I never got into that whole PC thing. It's not Tyrox, it's the tyrant. Don't say chicks say birds. Don't say birds say women. I don't know. It's all a little too complicated for a simple man of the air like myself. Just go look for the lost mo the lost Vandu, okay? Yes, ma'am. Oh, please, pretty lady, pretty, please help me. I've fallen and I can't stand up. What happened to you? Oh, I was out picking bones, uh, berries, berries for my stew and flowers. Yes, pretty flowers. Then I tripped over a big old root and twisted my ankle. It hurts so. Please help me home, pretty lady, please. All right, I'll help you home. Oh, yes. Thanks, plump little Trish. A nice, pretty girl. Thanks. I still need your help, plump pretty girl. I can't walk all the way home by myself, you see. Help me home and I'll cook you. A good, thick, creamy stew. Yum, I'm getting hungry myself. Let's go. Lead the way, ma'am. Yes, let's go. Come on, just follow me, my sweet treat. The old woman seems capable of walking on her own.
strangely enough. Maybe she just needed some, well, encouragement. Come in, come in, honored guest. I'll just check on my stuffing. On my stew, yes. My thick, delicious stew. Oh dear, what have we here? This stew isn't good enough to stuff. To serve a guest as plump. As well-built and delicious, as honored as you, my dear. Why don't you just wait here, and I will go pick some more berries and spices for my stuff. My stew. But wait, what about your bad back? What a strange... I mean, what a strange woman. There's something not quite right about this place. Like those skulls, for one. They look disturbingly humanoid. What's that sound? Where's it coming from? too big for me to carry around, but maybe I could use it somewhere in this room. Oh dear me. Who are you? Are you going to eat me? I'm April, and I've come to rescue you. Oh my, did my tribe send you? So to speak. I met your brother, Ben Bandu. Ben Bandu? Bandu Umanu Banta Orobana Biutan Dinoart? I think so. He said to call him Ben Bandu. Because he was sad for me? He will be so glad to find that you've rescued me then. Um, yeah. There could be a tiny little problem with that. The Gribbler captured you too? I guess she, it, whatever the Gribbler is, did capture me. That took me by surprise, since I did come here willingly. That's how she works, the Gribbler. She tricks Banda and humans to come here to her house, and then she cooks them and eats them. Friendly old lady, she's not. What's your name? Bandu Utama Tuta Uyatan Ayama Binaort. That's a little difficult for me to remember. How about I call you Bandu Uta? Oh my, yes, yes, that would be fine. We have long names, us Banda, as long as our tunnels. You can tell me more about your people later. Right now we need to find a way out of here. Over here, let's try something. Oh dear, oh dear me! What are you going to do? I'm gonna get you out of here. Hold on. Hey, wait a second. I need you to open the door for me. Don't run off. Damn. What am I going to do now? I am back with the berries and... What's happened here? Why is the... Human. 
I... I just saved an innocent person from being your dinner, Gribbler, so there. So, you think you could come into my house and set my dinner free and get away with it? Uh, well, I will get away with it, because soon a lot of people, armed people, will come to get me and to kill you. So you'd better... you'd better run away while you still have a chance. I guess you will be my dinner tonight, then. And I had hoped to save you for tomorrow. Oh, come on, Gribbler. You can't honestly think you can eat. Step aside. I know karate. Beat it. Get out of here. Oh, shit. Hi, Ben. Oh dear, oh dear. Where's the monster? She vanished like smoke up a chimney. Do you know what happened to your brother? He just ran off, didn't even stop to say goodbye. I, I met him back on the road. He was running like the wind. Said that when you helped him out of the window, he spotted the Gribbler returning, so he went to get help. I told him to alert the village, gather as many of the Banda as possible, and come back here. And that I'd try my best to aid you in the meanwhile. Thank you, that was very brave of you. Brave of me? Oh my. You defeated the Gribbler. You are a hero. I owe the life of my brother to you. The life of everyone in our tribe. I know my fellow Banda will want to reward you for your gracious deeds. You are invited to our village with me, and I will tell my people to prepare a grand feast for you. You don't have to do that, Ben. I just did what anybody would have done. But you did it! Give me your map, and I will show you where our village is. Then I must run ahead to tell the Banda that the Gribbler is no more! April! So glad you could come to our village and sit by our fire so we can thank you in the proper manner. It's my privilege, Ben Bandu. I wouldn't want to pass through this forest without visiting your village and seeing for myself how the Banda people live. Oh my, you speak so eloquently. My brother sits by the fire. I know he wishes to speak with you. But the elder would speak with you first. He rests in his hammock up on the mound. Go speak with him, and then come down again so we can celebrate the death of the Gribbler and the brave escape of April Ryan and Ben Bondu's brother. The hero of the day comes to visit the old Bandu. Let me see your face, human. Make yourself shorter. That's much better. The human is closer to the soil now, and she may even feel it like we do. Moving, shaping itself, breathing, beating. I don't feel anything. Sorry. So the human is not a digger. But we don't judge her because of that. The human is a hero, she is. Don't call me that. I'm not a hero. I was just in the right place at the right time to help somebody out. She destroyed the evil that haunted our forest, and rescued one of our little ones from the creatures of chaos. And so she is a hero. She's the one spoken of in our songs, is she not? The one who will deliver us from an evil presence, and who will go on to save the balance. You are she, are you not? I don't know. 
Well, we will see. We will see. You will sleep in our spirit dig tonight. And then tomorrow, we will see. But now, you must enjoy yourself. This feast is in your honor to show our appreciation for your courage. Thank you. Oh, eat and drink and dance, and then go to sleep in the spirit dig. We will talk tomorrow before you continue your journey. You are on a journey, are you not? A very long one, yeah. We are all on a journey. But yours is the most important one ever. So go. I will smoke my pipe and think on prophecies and songs. Go. <laughs> Oh dear, it's April. Sit, sit down. Are you feeling all right? I thought you disappeared on me back at the Gribbler's lair. Oh dear, I do apologize. I saw the Gribbler return from the forest, so I ran into the bushes and headed straight for the village. I was going to get help, you understand, but then I bumped into my brother, and I told him what was happening. Well, I'm glad you're okay. Thanks to you, April. How did you kill the Gribbler? Lots of luck, and a little bit of quick thinking. My limited talents in the martial arts were woefully underused. Were you frightened? I don't think I've ever been so frightened in my entire life. Kind of exhilarating, actually. Although, at this point, I think I've had quite enough excitement for a lifetime. Oh, dear me. I could never be as brave as you, April. Ever. What is the spirit dig the Elder told me about? Oh, it's a sacred place. A very sacred place. It's where we, the Banda, can speak with our ancestors, ask them questions, and learn from their wisdom. Yeah? Well, the Elder said I was to sleep there tonight. He did? The Elder said that? Then you have been honored by him, April. Only those worthy of the spirits of our ancestors can spend the night in the Spirit Day. Where is the Spirit Day? Right behind you, at the far end of our green. Enjoy the party, guys. Oh, but it's in your honor, April. You must enjoy it yourself, too. Pro? Oh, hey, uh, I was uh, wondering what happened to you. What happened to you? I thought you were supposed to help out in the search. I could have used some assistance this afternoon. Uh, yeah, but I did find some mal... Some banda, didn't I? Just not the one we were looking for, is all. And besides, I was beat! My wings can only carry me so far before I need a twig to rest on and a couple of juicy berries. Speaking of berries, did you taste the ones they got here? The word is yum, big yum. I don't know what they soaked them in, but hoo-hoo, ma'am! Well, at least you're okay. No, sure, you know me. I could use a good flea plucking, though. Care to reward me for my diligence? Diligence? Ha! <sighs> I'm guessing I'll be plucking my own fleas tonight, then, and, and I'm okay with that. I'm blaming you if I wake up with a crick in the neck tomorrow, though. I'll just lie down for a few.
No, screw that. I'm getting a good night's sleep. That's what I'm doing. I've never been this tired in my life. Really save the world, do you? Who are you? I don't tell me you don't recognize me, April Ryan. I'm you. That's impossible. This is just another dream. I must be dreaming. Think again, loser. This is as real as it gets. Why are you here? I'm sending you home, that's what. You're a sad little twit, don't you realize that? There's no point subjecting the entire world, hey, two worlds, to your feeble attempts at redeeming yourself, is there? Go away, leave me alone. How the hell am I supposed to do that, Einstein? I am you. You are me. Unfortunately for the both of us, we're inseparable. I don't need this Freudian id crap. Not now. There's so much I have to do, so many people I have to help. Oh yeah? Like you really believe that? Like you give a shit about those people? You're doing this for yourself, April, and that's why you're gonna fail. Shut up! Shut up! That's always your way out, isn't it? Telling people to shut up when they speak the truth and shutting them out when they're getting too close for comfort. Hey, don't tell me. I do it because Daddy hurt me. Screw that. How do you think you're gonna hold up when this job gets tough if you can't rely on anybody or believe in anything? I'm doing it, aren't I? Yeah, because what kind of choice did you have? Face your problems back home? Face the nightmares? I don't think so. So you run. And you think you're putting distance between yourself and your fear of the past and the present? All you're doing is running straight into an inevitable nervous breakdown. Like right now. You're talking to yourself, April. Now that's not something a mentally stable person would do, is it? Shut up! Shut up! It's okay, April. It's okay. Charlie? Charlie, is that you? Shh. Don't you worry. I'm here. I'll take good care of you. Oh, God, Charlie, I'm so glad that... You're... You're... You're not here. You can't be. I'm still dreaming. No, no, you're not dreaming. I'm here, but in spirit only. Is it? Is it really you, Charlie? We are Charlie, your friend. We feel his heart and his mind, and his sleeping spirit joins us. But we speak from the great digs of the beyond, where the songs of the panda never end. Are they dead? We have passed into the soil. We are spirits, and we have come to guide you. Why, Charlie? Why do you show me Charlie? He loves you. And so he guides us here. Into your heart and mind. He loves me? Charlie loves me? You are not alone in the world, April. There are many who care for you. Your friends and your family. Your real family. You are not alone in your journey through life. What do you know about my family? My real family. They watch out for you, April. That's all we know. They have never abandoned you. They have just let you live the life you needed to live. To understand. It's important that you understand. Understand what? That life. 
even when difficult and painful, is a gift. That love is priceless and rare and precious. That every good action, every good thought counts. And that a single person can make a difference, can change the world. If she puts her mind to it, if she believes in herself, and the people who believe in her. But everything is so frightening. I don't understand half of what goes on around me. Did not the mother say she would help you? Watch out for you? Did not Charlie and Emma, your friends, offer to give you a helping hand when you didn't even tell them the truth about what was going on? And Cortez the Red, did he not prove himself a friend as well? How then can you be so afraid when you have so many spirits to be with you in your darkest hour? Cortez the Red? Please, tell me what I have to do. I'm just fumbling in the dark here. Follow your heart and your spirit, April, and use your mind. These are your weapons, and with them you will defeat chaos. When you wake, tell the Elder that you've had a Bach bar, that you've spoken with the band of spirits, and that your name amongst our people is now April Bandu and Bata, April Digger who will seek and find. Oh, don't go, please don't go!